Can you see the stars alive? to do the back lights. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm having a time. It's it's one of those things. Um I don't really feel like getting into it. Just, just know it's derived from my physical, uh, my physical being. I'm, I'm having a rough time of it. Um, so, yeah, um, bit of a, 
bit of a depressive episode as a result of some physical stuff. That's basically where it lands. Um, I don't want to get into it further than that. That's that's just all I, I just don't feel like talking about it. So I will eventually. Boy, not right now. It's a little too fresh, it's a little too raw. Um so yeah. Uh, I got some uh <clears throat> got some weights lifted today though. Um Yeah. The way I feel about it, basically, is that, you know, I had a high watermark this week. Like, I had a, I had a, had a good time, right? That, um, that last DJ in story time, it's really good fucking time. So, of course, the universe reacts. I, that's how my life has always been. If, if I have a high watermark, that means I get a low watermark. That's, it's one step forward, two steps back with me. Always has been. Seems to be, always will be. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. It is what it is, right? You roll with the punches, you keep moving forward, cliche, 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 right? Like there's not much I can say beyond that, but yeah, um, we're going to do some more reading tonight. I want to get it done. It's, it's a project. I'm working on it, you know, um, Dippy, it was, it was glorious. It was glorious. So, of course, the universe wants to take something from me. Seems everything has a cost. Some full metal alchemist shit up in this bitch. Um. Alright, why am I getting a notice from fucking Twitch here? Maestro Panda gifted me a tier one sub to Hassan Abi. Okay. I was about to make that reference. Thanks for letting me not show him a weeb. Sorry, Cupcake. Okay, it's the first thing. I did, yeah, Zippy, it does. I honestly, I've never had anything in my life not work that way. Um, It's okay, Wilhelm. Catch you later. Good luck or have fun. Whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Let's just put it that way. Um. Oh, that's right. I suppose there comes, those comes with emotes, huh? They're, none of them are good. Um, and of course, this this muscle's all fucking jacked up too. They're all kind of crap emotes. Do why are all Hassan's emotes shit? Um, yeah, so, like, this muscle's all jacked up, so I can't even, like, I, I couldn't sit down and play a fucking video game with keyboard and mouse right now if I tried. Um. Fucking, he'll get over it. <clears throat> Greg's. He'll get over it. And when he looks at that fucking monthly paycheck, uh, from... From Twitch, he'll be fine. Oh, the hate's making me want to quit. 
Ching. Eh, you know what? Eh, fuck the haters. That's how that'll work. Um, I, I need to get my head in the game. You know what, though? You know which one has one, some of the least? I mean, this is crazy as fuck, and it's going to sound like I'm just standing for my fucking, my sight, right? Like, but, like, if you, if you make a thread on Reddit, everybody just laughs at you. Right, like that's that's the thing. Like that's the origin of that sort of fucking Navy SEAL copy pasta. Right? Like that Right, like if you if you make those kind of threats on Reddit, it really just sort of laughs at you and fucking makes fun of you for it. Right? Like everywhere else it, it it's got a different tone, but over on Reddit it's just fucking it's like, God, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> Get over your fake internet points, dude. Who gives a shit? There was a, um, there was a, um, yeah, exactly. They've got a subreddit dedicated to making fun of those people. Hey, nonsense. There was a, there was a, um, some sort of ad study done. Reddit users are the least valuable users online. <laughs> Like as far as marketing and advertising goes, they filter the, some of the they they filter the most ads. They ignore the most ads. They have the lowest click through rate. Like it's literally, Reddit users are the most worthless users on the internet, which is a good thing. It's a good thing, right? If a fucking site can profit greatly from you in that regard, then yeah, that's that's bad. And so yeah. Fucking Reddit users are the most worthless users online. <laughs> exactly. Proud to be worthless. Proud to be worthless. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, yeah, fucking Reddit users can't be advertised to. <laughs> Even when they do the, like, uh, guerrilla marketing or, like, you know, the fucking subtle, like, oh, you know, it fucking, some, some dude, oh, and I was, my, you know, oh, here's a picture of my Subaru that, you know, here's a picture of, I was just in a car crash and my, but thankfully my family survived and they show a fucking picture of a Subaru in a crash. Immediately, people start posting hail corporate. Fucking r slash hail corporate. People call that shit out so hard and so fast. Like, yeah, this is a fucking ad, dude. This is a fucking ad. Like, hail corporate. Yeah. Like, legit. It's, it's fucking... It, look, Reddit is toxic. Reddit has caused so many fucking problems unto itself. But as far as, like, massive online communities go, it's... It's my shithole, right? Like, it's my shithole. <laughs> there was, um, I pay a Reddit subscription to, uh, hope keeping, wait. Do you pay for Reddit premium or some shit, Cassiopeia? You don't pay for Reddit premium, right? Just get Apollo if you're on iOS or fucking, I forget the one for Android, or just use old.reddit with R, uh, RES, the Reddit Enhancement Suite in Origin, uh, um, um, Origins. Strip that shit out. Like, look, I'm, I'll, fuck, we'll take care of this shit right now. Do not pay for, don't ever give Reddit money. Don't ever give Reddit money. There's no reason to do that. Oh, I'll talk about that idiot in a second. Um, caboose, there was, um, uh, there's tons of civility. You just got to know where to look, Crix. Reddit is like the internet. It's like the internet. You just got to know where to look. It has its corners, right? If you're, if you uh, legit, okay. C um, for my fellow Redditors. Um, oh, well, then you're just dumb. Sorry. Um, for my fellow Redditors, one of the places I feel most at home is PCM memes. It's the political compass memes. I, I legit, like, right, Caboose? Right, like, 
how the fuck did political compass memes turn into the like safe haven it is? It doesn't, everybody gets along. Everybody gets along. It's fucking crazy as shit. Fucking off left, lib left, centrists, off right, lib right, and yet everybody fucking just hand in hand revels in our, our, our idiocy together. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's like a model. I, 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 you know, most of the time, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I, I don't, I can't even like, do I, dare I say it? Like the, the unofficial slogan of P, uh, of political compass memes when people wander, it's one of my favorite things when people wander into comments and they haven't flared up. <laughs> it's one of my favorite moments. <laughs> it's just, they just fucking, they try and comment on a thread without a flare. <laughs> fucking brilliant the reaction they get <laughs> oh flare up retard <laughs> it's fucking they don't give a shit <laughs> who the fuck's your flare flare up or die flare up retard they don't care they don't care oh i love those fucking idiots it is legitimately one of the most wholesome places on the internet <laughs> there's been a there's been a spate of um of popular threads on uh, on posts on uh, political compass memes at least recently, um, yeah, good opinion, but disregarded because no flair. Um, okay, so basically, it's a it's a it's a tag on your username, and it can be set custom by the user, or it could be set from a pre-selected list by the Reddit uh, by the subreddit moderators. So on P, uh, on political compass means they have all of the t typical flares, right? They have like off left, centrist, center left, center right, lib left, uh, off right, off uh, uh, lib right, these sorts of things, right? So you can identify yourself. If you don't have a flare on your username, people will dog pile you and as caboose put like good opinion but disregarded because no flare right flare up or die right like it, it, it they, they literally will disregard your opinion it doesn't matter how good it is you will get downvoted into oblivion if you don't flare up it's 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 a communal it's a social rule it's not even enforced at the mod level it's enforced at the community level it is one of the most hilarious things to watch in action. And they just dogpile fucking newcomers. <laughs> but there, Kez, thanks for the thanks for the raid. Um, I'm just I'm trying to find a moment of light in a pretty rough week. So um, I'm talking about Reddit. Um, there's been a spate of posts on political compass memes recently about like make fun of your own position. Right? What's the worst thing about your quadrant? What's the worst thing about your flair? Make fun of your flair. What's the th what's the stereotype for your flair? And it's been fun. It's been fun. Right? Like it, it, it is legitimately like everybody just fuck it. Also, by the way, I uh, uh, going into those posts, caboose especially, I noticed the off lefts flare up. Um, the off lefts don't really participate. I've only seen a like less than a handful of them participate in those fucking posts. The off lefts have no sense of humor about it. They won't do it. it it's it's like yeah, everybody else participates. The fucking centrists participate. The 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 lib rights. They fucking like the off lefts just are like no, I won't make fun of us. Like it's like oh for fuck's sake. Yeah, like the lib the lib lefts come right out of the gate. We're like we're gonna woke scold you into cancellation if you don't dye your hair bright green right now and admit that you're a trans femme, right? Like that was one of the posts. <laughs> it's like I respect it. I respect it. Um, the lib rights came right out of the fucking gate. It was brilliant. Um, the fucking lib rights were like, yep, we're gonna try and get rid of age of consent. Right, it was it was just like that. They immediately knew like what the thing for their group was. Like, yep, we're getting rid of age and consent. It's a fucking issue for us. Uh, the off rights are universally funnier than the off lefts. Universally funnier on. Uh, we're talking about the subreddit called Poli Political Compass Memes, which hilariously, despite a, a a fucking subreddit dedicated around segmenting and segregating political ideologies, it is highly unified. 
they they get people get along. There's exceptions, but people actually get along. Like the centrists are getting along with off rights and off lefts and lib lefts. It, it's it's fucking amazing. It's an amazing haven on the internet, especially within political spaces. But the off lefts are fucking obnoxious. The off lefts are fucking obnoxious, and the um and the 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 the, the like off rights are hilarious. They're they're legitimately funny. It, it is it is the most like damning evidence against off left. It is just watch their participation in political compass memes, and you're like, holy shit, you fuckers don't have a sense of humor. Um and oh hey Danny, thank you for the gift sub. Um. Yeah yeah I mean yeah guess. Uh, off the left won't participate in self critique even if it gave them internet points. No, they won't. They literally won't. They they it is it is hilarious to watch those fucking threats. Um, yeah, the the lib left knows what their deal is. The lib right knows what their deal is. The off right knows what their deal is. The centrists know what their deal is. But the fucking off left just sits on the fucking sidelines and fucking no. It's like oh my god, you guys are just insufferable. <laughs> hey Charlotte. Uh, some flare all quads. Yep. Um, I saw somebody. Um, Cyberheart, thank you for the follow. Um, I saw somebody actually like you know good. Somebody got into a discussion with some uh, some hey maniac on one of the the threads and the guy goes you know to be perfectly honest i just chose off right for the memes i don't give a shit about any of this <laughs> like fuck yeah <laughs> it's like it lets me make the funniest comments and there are people that do that that swap flares depending on what they're attempting to meme on or something like that yep based they have a based bot they have a they have a based counter bot for how many times somebody has replied to your comment with based and there are people with some serious scores that you're like, holy shit. No, there are people with like thousands and tens of thousands of based. <laughs> it's fucking, oh, uh, oh, I love that fucking dude. I honestly, I probably would have, I probably would have off myself years ago if it weren't for Reddit. I know that's dark, but I'm serious, right? Like when you're, when you're just in a dark place, you can just fucking scroll some of this shit. And you just, you know, disappear a few hours. It's a good, it's a good thing to have. <clears throat> Night, Kez. Well, I mean. Oh, I don't, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't touch Twitter. I don't fucking touch Twitter. Twitter's a fucking cesspool. Twitter's a cesspool. So worst of humanity on display in, in, in on Twitter, honestly. Reddit is like, oh, okay. So Kez is just like trying to like relax. That's all. Um, Reddit is like all of humanity, right? Like it's just all there on display. Twitter is just the worst of humanity distilled down and put forward, right? Reddit's got the worst and the best, and it's got everything in between. From the mundane to the highly specific to, you know, highly niche subreddits of, like, fucking people just delving into the depths of, like, highly specific niche knowledge, right? And building stuff and creating and giving and doing and all sorts of stuff. And it's got the whole breadth of humanity. There's a subreddit for everything. It's a true... It, there's a subreddit for everything. Twitter is just, like, the the worst of humanity distilled to an essence, to a perfume, and then sprayed in the air. It's fucking disgusting. Um. <sighs> so I started watching Foundation. Um. Oh, de garbage. Garbage. Uh, eau de garbage by Twitter. Okay. So, all right. You know what? I'll talk about foundation in a second. All right. I miss GeoCities. There we go. Let's fucking, if we're doing this shit, Excel, I miss GeoCities. Um, all right. Let's talk about the, the fucking garbage dump. 
All right. But before I get on foundation, because I got a, I got a few things to say. Um, let's talk about the garbage dump that is Meta. All right. One. How dare he try and bite off Neil Stevenson? All right. Fucking. This is this is this is an issue for me. Um. Let me see if I can't. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. He did react. I, I, wanted, I just want you to see something here. All right? The Metaverse creator reacts to Facebook's name change. Okay? The term Metaverse was created by Neil Stevenson, one of the most brilliant science fiction and cyberpunk writers of all time. All right, this guy created Snow Crash and Cryptonomicon. You, whether you know it or not, he impacted the science fiction and cyberpunk and the like, all the shit that you fucking adore from like, from your era. Neil Stevenson basically influenced it. How we visualize the internet in like science fiction and high technology. Neil Stevenson did that. All right. Like, literally, like, The Matrix literally bites off a piece of Neil Stevenson's vision, right? Like, it, it is... Neil created a good portion of the modern, internet-relevant, virtual reality-relevant, hacker-relevant science fiction, all right? He created the metaverse. It is his term. He literally wrote it. It's his. And fucking this douchebag comes out and fucking wants to create the metaverse. Right? He wants, oh, we're going to be named Meta. And the fucking, the breadth of products will be, we'll have, we'll have VR chat called Metaverse. Mm-hmm. Right? I just want to really quickly see. I feel you should get some compensation for the whole plan and future of this company. What do you think? Neil's response. In order to get compensation from Facebook or any other company, I would need to sign some kind of deal in which I gave the company rights to some IP in exchange for payment. Those are the rules of the road. No such deal exists between me and Facebook. Like, that's that's sort of just Neil saying, like, I won't sign a deal with those assholes. All right? This, I, I, when I heard this fucking metaverse shit, I, I was immediately livid. I was immediately livid. I was like, they're straight up going to rip off one of the greatest science fiction authors of all time. Like, just go straight up rip them off. Like, not even fucking, like, a tip, like, a tip of the hat, like, a nod towards Neil. Right? Like, nothing. Just fucking nothing. Go fuck yourself. This is our idea, right? Fucking, yeah, sure. Yeah, I literally wrote several books on why trusting big tech corps like you was a bad idea. He literally... Cr Snow Crash is about a corporate-run dystopian hellscape. Yeah, it's what the book is about. The book is about a corporate-run dystopian hellscape where they have, where they have a, a fucking um, like corporate-run fucking nation states and like suburbs that are their own fucking corporate-run nation states. It's it's a fucking nightmare of a scenario. And they're gonna unironically call themselves it. I swear to God. <laughs> I heard that Elizabeth Holmes ripped Betsy DeVos off for $100 million. It made me like her. Um, yeah, you know what? I was... Dude, I, I, I legitimately... My, my top two books 
are The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Okay? Hero protagonist is one of the greatest fucking creations in the history of fucking, you know, of, of like cyberpunk science fiction, like modern era science fiction, right? The metaverse, how he visualized it, his predictions for corporate run, uh, the corporate run dystopian future. This book means shit to me, right? And when I saw that they were going to just bite off fucking Neil's, sh- Neil's shit without even f- fucking winking a nod... I was I was legitimately angrier probably than Neil Stevenson was himself. It was, mm, yep. It it's dude it, tech support. It is one of the best books. It's one of the best books. Yes, it was Corey. It was Gur. <clears throat> I I I. It is one of the best books. Straight up. Now. By saying it is one of the best books, let's allow me to legitimately pivot. Bedouin, thank you for the sub. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing better than I am, Bedouin. Um, let me legitimately pivot to a book series that has literally been voted the best science fiction series of all time. Foundation by Isaac Asimov. First off, so I binged all of the, I've binged all of the episodes that have been released thus far for Foundation on Apple. All right. I watched seven or eight episodes. I forget how many are released so far, um, but I watched them all. Um, Hey, Zero. No, Karina, I'm not. I said at the top of the show, I don't feel like talking about it. Um, it has to relate to my physical being and a depression caused by that physical a- entity, so no. Um, no, I don't. Okay, so let me put this exceedingly clear. If I wanted to talk about it, I would talk about it. Thank you for asking. Stop asking. Um... Well, Bidouin, this is the thing, Bidouin. Um, tech support, it was the Hugo Awards back in 66. Um, if you are a fan, if you are like a true fan of the Foundation series. Okay? Like, if you've read Foundation and it was transformative for you in any way, shape, or form, the Apple TV series is not that. It's not. It is in Foundation. The Apple TV series is as close to the Foundation books as a movie that starts with based on a true story. It's not the series. It's not Foundation. I don't remember who, uh, who I. Uh, no, I don't mean this in like. I don't mean this in the typical book nerd way. I mean legitimately. It is not the Foundation series. It's not. They the uh, the scriptwriter himself has basically said that the Asimov uh, estate was fine with it as well. That this is not the Foundation series because the Foundation series can't be translated to film. So it is inspired by Foundation. It takes ideas from Foundation and uses those to build a world. But it is not Foundation. By by uh, six pairs, we're not talking about SCP. We're talking about the actual Foundation. Um... Caboose, pretty close, actually. Pretty close. Um, Charlotte, this is where my critique it lies, right? As a series, as far as, like, hard sci-fi goes, it has its own aesthetic. 
It doesn't look like Star Wars. It doesn't look like Star Trek. It doesn't look like Alien. It has its own actual aesthetic, which is extraordinarily difficult to do in today's day and age. So mad props on the showrunners and the designers and the modelers and all the, the graphic designers that worked on that because that's a task set unto itself to like say it doesn't look like Star Trek. It doesn't look like Star Wars, right? It literally has its own aesthetic props right it, it's it, see Bidouin here's what I read because after I went after I watched I binged the seven episodes or whatever I went looking I was like okay so what's the deal right the they have two seasons signed that will complete the first foundation book that's book one the showrunner pitched eight seasons for a conclusion. He, he said, I have a, a draft, an outline, a roadmap. I think roadmap was his term for to, to complete the foundation arc. So I haven't, uh, well, yeah, I probably watched that too, a uh, bit of one. Let me, uh, you know what? I can, I can fucking check. Um, media, Apple TV plus. Originals and yeah, I'm not watching that. Um, Oh, and just watch Ted Lasso. Just do yourself a favor and watch Ted Lasso, people. It's a it's a good fucking show. Apple TV Plus is actually starting to get put out like solid content. Um, okay, so yeah, I haven't watched episode eight yet, bit of one. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I haven't. I've gotten up to the um, I've gotten up to the uh, uh fucking mysteries and martyrs. I haven't gotten up to um, the latest one. Um, so, if you are a fan of Foundation, the books, I did Bitwin, just bit Bitwin. I'm good. Don't don't even hint. Don't even hint. I I knew it was coming, but I mean, you know, I mean, it's it it kind of has to. You have to, but if you're a fan of the books, if you if you love the books you probably won't like the foundation series on Apple. Like legitimately, you probably won't like it. Um, if you have no connection to the foundation books, you probably actually will enjoy the foundation series on Apple. Um, oh, sour tangy. That fucking sucks. <clears throat> It's a good series. Here's what you have to know, though. It's, it's, it takes work. It is, it's big. It's big. The Foundation series, the Foundation series takes, takes hundreds of years to tell. It spans a galaxy. It literally spans the entirety of the Milky Way and spans I mean, technically, thousand a thousand years, I suppose, is the the Dark Age, but it is a huge story. It's it's massive, and it's many books comprised of many short stories. It's an anthology, and the characters aren't carried through, and so they had to change the story writing, the storytelling to follow something, to create something that viewers could connect with. Because if I'm just tossing characters left and right, you don't have anybody to see the show, see the world through their eyes, right? You, you don't develop those emotive connections to characters. So they, they fundamentally change the storytelling methodology from the books to the, the series. But... It's, it's good. It's good. Um, it's just, yeah, I was like, where are the four kingdoms? Why do we have multiple Cleons? 
What the fuck is going on here? Why is fucking, why is Harry not first minister? Right? Like what, what is, what is happening here? Right? Like the story is fundamentally different. It is fundamentally different from w what is told in the books. Um, this is way too friendly. Asimov or Philip K. Dick? Asimov. 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 Um, ugh, sorry to hear that, Karina. I, 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 neither of them are on my shit list. Right? Like, neither of them on my shit list. But if I just had to wait, if I had to, if I had to pick, I think I'm picking Asimov. And it's not, it's not necessarily, it's not even for the stories. It's almost for his impact. Um, okay. Somebody asked earlier my opinion on Dune. One, I haven't seen it. Two, I never finished it. I don't like Herbert's writing. I don't like Dune. It's not my style. It's not my setting. Remember I just said that this is a giant story that encapsulates empires and fucking huge time frames. And Dune, basically, you're, you're probably sitting there going, well, Dune's kind of the same. What, what, you know, how does Kai feel? I don't like Dune. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like Dune. I, it never clicked with me. The aesthetic doesn't click with me. The storytelling methodology doesn't click with me. The, uh, the writing style doesn't click. I don't like Dune. I read Dune five times before I realized that literally nothing happened. A lot of a lot of foundation is honestly just like minutes from meetings. Um, for those of you who have read Foundation, stop looking at it through rose-colored glasses for a second and realize how much of that was just fucking describing meetings. There's there's a not insignificant portion of the Foundation series that is describing committee meetings and meetings between politicians and meetings of trade negotiations and meetings of and meetings of and meetings of and meetings. there's a there's a lot of fucking meetings descriptions in the Foundation series. Just remember that. Uh, <laughs> meetings to discuss the meetings of meetings. Um, Dune is creepy and sexist at times. Other novels display these traits without and make them your protagonist. That's another thing they did. They did right. Um, spoiler alert. Yeah, no, right. Um, that's another thing the showrunner did right with Asimov's writing and the estate, like the holders of the estate he sat down with and he said, first off, I got to gender swap a bunch of these characters and I got to race swap a bunch of these characters. This is just, this is entirely a, a galaxy full of white dudes. He's like, are you okay with me doing that? And the, apparently the two, the, the, the holders of the estate, the, 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 the family members, the, the Asimovs, they were like, oh no, for sure. Do that. Like for sure. Do that. We, there's way too many white dudes in this story. Like it's, it's all dude. It's a galaxy of fucking white dudes. You're like, where are the women? Where, where are, where are all of the other people? Like, right. You know? Yeah. They're like, oh, for sure. For sure. Gender and race swap these characters. Um, changing, uh, changing gal to, uh, uh, uh to, um, a black woman. Solid, fucking solid decision. I think that's just a solid casting for. Uh, I think a lot. I think a lot of the casting is done really well. I think the casting has has been spot on. I think the characters are. I, I've, I. There hasn't been a single character that I've, I've, I've looked at, or a single actor and character in this story that I'm like, that's the wrong act. That's the wrong actor in that position. They, they should not have cast that person. So far, all of the casting choices feel organic. They feel like they understand their characters. The only one I have a little issue with is um, Bidouin, since you've seen it. Is he 14th or, or 15th? 
Who's the who's the Cleon that's having trouble? Um, whichever Cleon is having trouble, I'm I'm not sold on him yet. Not just as a character, but like as the actor embodying that character, it's a little meh. Um. Oh, Jesus Christ! Not surprising. Um. Yeah, it it it, but. I, I, I legitimately, I can separate, um, yeah, yeah, no, no, Bidwin, I'm talking about, um, Dawn, I'm talking about a rising Dawn or fucking whatever the, the recent one is, yeah, not Lee Pace, not, not Day, not Dusk, I'm talking about the current Dawn that's struggling, um, that is the genetic and not... I'm sorry, sorry. I'm not going to fucking say anything else just for fucking. But the, the current one that's struggling. Um, it is not spoilers to talk about uh, Dawn, Day, and Dusk, which is an interesting concept because that doesn't exist in the books. But as far as a storytelling narrative and to be able to reuse actors across time periods and maintain a consistent antagonist, that was a really interesting choice that he that, that the the showrunner went with. That was that was a uh, kind of a stroke of genius, and I think like I think Asimov would approve. It's sufficiently high, uh, like high sci-fi. It, it was I. I think it's a good. I. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm not. I'm not 100 sold on that actor as an acting choice. I. I he hasn't embodied the role, uh, for me, the the way the others have. Everybody else felt like they just they slotted into their roles. Um, uh, the chick who's playing the Arcturian Huntress or Grand Huntress, I hated her from moment one. Not as an actor choice. I'm saying as a character. Um, I hated her immediately. I was like, can somebody murder this cunt? She was such a good fucking choice as an uh, as an actor for that role. That was she embodied that role. I I was impressed. Yeah, she's despicable, right? Like I was impressed when you can instantly get me to hate you, right? I was like, holy shit, she's a she's a fucking badass actor, right? Like I was I was impressed with her her chops. Um, yeah, and uh, whoever's whoever the guy playing um, Brother Dusk, he's just got he's got that gravitas for sure. He's fucking nailing that shit. Salvor has felt kind of stilted, which, given what they did to Salvor, like Terrence Man, yeah, Terrence fucking just old school actor shit, right? He's got gravitas. Um, yeah, Salvar has felt a little stilted as, as well, but given how they've manipulated the storyline, <sighs> oh, that's right. That's you're right. I didn't even, that didn't even click for me, Bidouin. He's, he's, he's embodying the role so effectively, but yeah, you're right. He was, um, fucking whatever that dude was, um, whispers. Whispers. Sensei was good. It took Sensei was slow burn, but it was eventually bad fucking ass. I'm. I, I wish they had gotten a third or fourth season, but their first season was a throwaway. It took them too long to wind up. Uh, when when Netflix canceled them and made them work on it, like get the fucking job done. That's when that story got good. Um, I think I think the Wachowskis work best with like hard limits on what they're allowed to do. When you just let them run wild. They get a little long-winded. Um, so, like, yeah, yeah, fucking, that dude, he was, he, yeah, he's a really good actor. And, yeah, he's, he, the, 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 the sort of gravitas that he brings to Brother Dusk, total, total win. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it, it isn't foundation. Um, it, it, it isn't foundation. Um, and I think that's okay. How I'd be as an actor? Um, Corey, I am or was 
Two classes of drama a day for four years, plus a touring repertory company? I am technically a trained actor. Um, ah, nice. Me on the big screen. Love it. Um, yeah, I am technically a trained actor. I've done a, I've done a monologue on stream before. I forget who it was. Somebody was doing a monologue. Um, they were practicing a monologue for some class. I, yep, Kaz, I can still do a beast of a monologue. Um, and I had him send it to me. And I did a, uh, I did a first draft read. Like, I just did a cold read of it. Um, and I, I yeah, I've, I've still got some chops. I'm, I'm halfway decent. I can emote. I can, I can embody a character. Yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah yeah he's got chops he's got real chops um what kind of political ideas would you say come out in foundation the books the tv spinoff whatever well see the books and the tv show are two different things um believe it or not the the foundation series is almost fatalistic the books at least they're fatalistic. Um, the whole cornerstone of psychohistory, or what we would call mathematical sociology, but this is this is. And by the way, real sociological uh, methodologies came out of the uh, out of just uh, out of Asimov's writing for real. Um, chaos, unde chaos in undeterminate. Or something like that. There's there's a thing in sociology that is literally the direct result of insight of from Asimov's foundation writing, right? When a populace gains knowledge of their actions or future actions, then their uh, then their behavior pattern becomes chaotic and indeterminate. So what you knew was going to be a certainty for a population or a demographic tomorrow. If you tell that demographic what they were going to do tomorrow, that tomorrow is now called into question and will likely not happen. Um, so real sociological effects have been derived from insights gained from the Foundation series, but it is highly fatalistic. Um, the, the Foundation series is basically... Um, there is going to be the math is correct the science and math is correct society the galactic empire civilization is going to fall and human beings are going to enter a dark age of a thousand to thirty thousand years it's going to happen and while individual actions can't be metric the actions of a select few in a few select key places at the the right people at the right point at the right time can change large scale they can create large scale effects on the whole right but ultimately as a mass the population is doomed to the science and the math the the course is set there's no turning back this is how it will be. There will be the downfall. The downfall will occur and the downfall does occur. Right? Like it is hugely fatalistic. Oh, for Tuse, I'd really rather not. I'm I'm not in that mindset right now for Tuse. I'm I'm in a sort of a depressive mode. And that that takes a lot out of me. I'll kick you your points back, but I, I I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna decline that right now. Um, maybe another day. If you want to do it another day, let me know. But right now, I'm sort of not in the mood for that. Um, oh, interesting. I used to study sociology and social policy. Now I have an excuse. Yes, Charlotte. It it is it is an interesting thing. Um, Yep, bootstrap, oh God, bootstrap paradoxes. Um, it's a brilliant series. It's a brilliant series. And I'm not talking about the Apple TV show. The, the Apple TV show, we will, see, we will see. When they conclude the first book, 
Um, we'll see. I don't think they're going to get a third season. I don't think that it's been received well enough by the populace. I don't think it's been received well enough by the critics. I don't think it's been received well enough by the fanboys of Asimov. I don't think there will be a third season of the Foundation series on Apple TV. I don't think so. I think we'll see the first book done because they've Apple has written, they've they've signed on for the uh, for the second season, which is going to conclude the first book. And according to the showrunner, he said, if you took two of my budgets for, uh, if you took the budget from two of my episodes, that is more money than most uh, most major movies. They are spending ungodly amounts of money on this series. I mean, like staggering amounts of money. Psychohistory is probably why I ended up studying culture and inter uh, intercultural relations. Hey, a bit of win. I don't mind for at, at all. Do it, do it, do it. And if you just want to use the shout out command, bit of win, fucking exclamation SO and your name, and it'll automatically do it. But I, yeah, no, you, bit of win, you're cool. I don't mind if you ever, don't, you don't, don't feel you ever need to ask. You're good. You're good people. Um, I right, Kez. Catch you later. Sleep well. Ooh, and a fire. Um. A Karina Apple is just literally throwing money. The Apple is Apple is looking to start up a streaming service. And so they need like they need prestige shows, right? They need those prestige shows. So they're literally spending money like a trillion dollar company can spend money. That's it. Like legitimately, that's what they're doing is they're launching a streaming service. So if you're a talent and you're a name and you can bring big game to the, to the fucking table, they will basically write you a blank check. Um, it is, it, they, yeah, like they're doing it the only way, doing it the way that only a trillion dollar company can do. Yeah. They, they're just like, who needs money? Make us shit. And they're doing it, they're doing it differently than the way Amazon went about it at first and Netflix, Netflix and Amazon, they're doing it the Apple way. You know what? They're doing it the Apple way. Netflix and Amazon went out and bought a whole bunch of bullshit property and like full filled their coffers full of it, right? Huge libraries of just dog shit and then started trying to make some halfway decent stuff. Apple was like, we are a premium product. We are a premium brand. Everything we do comes with that veneer of the premium aesthetic. Therefore, any media we create should as well. So they didn't fill their library full of bullshit. They started from scratch and they're like, hey, Oprah, you want to do a show? Hey, Jon Stewart, you want to do a show? Hey, let's do an Asimov series that everybody says can't be put to film, right? Let's do one of the winningest, like, dude, Ted Lasso is just Emmy bait at this point. Ted Lasso is a great fucking show. Sports show, comedy with a heart of gold, right? Like, let's let's do all the stuff. Let's do real, like, edgy fucking um, musical documentaries and stuff. Let's look at the Velvet Underground with Andy Warhol and do a documentary on that, right? They, they're doing what Apple does. They're doing it the way Apple does shit. Right? They're not doing it the way Amazon does shit. They're not doing it the way Netflix did it. But it's a still the same process. They're a trillion dollar company. They're writing blank checks. It, Karina, that's all they're doing. They're doing originals. Yeah, that's what Apple is doing. They're not buying other people's shit. They're making their own.
they're just cutting blank checks to whoever they can and they're filling their library with their content. They did their own like planet Earth series. They they do their own like yeah, that's what they're doing. And they're doing it with the aesthetic of Apple. It's all super high fucking quality. It took them a while to find their footing. Um anything about work camps? Not yet. Um it took them a minute to find their footing. Their comedy section was really painful. Um, it was, for a minute, Apple didn't understand what the word comedy meant. Yeah, like legitimately. Um, it was like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Like, this isn't funny. This is depressing, right? Like, they, they legitimately didn't seem to understand what comedy meant for a minute. Um... So, but yeah, like they're putting out decent content. Um, they have less of it than everybody else because they're making original content. Um, but the content they do put out on average is above par. It's above par. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've, yeah, like they're coming into their own as a streaming service now. They're starting to have enough stuff to like have enough series to watch on a regular basis, right? For the first year, it was, there was no point to Apple TV plus. There was no reason to have it. Just none. There's no point. Now there's a back catalog of stuff that's actually worth watching. And like I said, I've said it before. I've said it again. I'll say it again. Dude, Ted Lasso is a good fucking series. It's a good fucking series. It's legitimately good. It's about a, 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 a sort of a mid-tier American college football coach who goes to England to be a soccer, to be a, a football coach over there without knowing anything about soccer, without knowing anything about football. It's, it's legitimately a good series. Um, it is sweet. It has a heart of gold. It's got an excellent set, set of uh, an excellent cast, excellent writing, and it it's legitimately a good series. And yeah, it won like seven Emmys this last time around because it's a legitimately good series, and it's difficult to deny it. Um, or slash hail corporate. Hey, if Apple wants to peel off a piece of that trillion dollar check tech support, <clears throat> I'm just saying. Fucking trillion dollars, a lot of money, y'all. Like I said, dude, the, the showrunner for a foundation said, you take two of my episodes, put their budget together, that's more than most big budget movies get. All right, so Apple's spending like 70 million per episode or some shit on fucking, uh, on, on the foundation series. All right, do you understand the kind of cash they're tossing around right now? F yes, yes, I will shill for Apple for one of those checks. Are you shitting me? Everybody's got a price. Jesus Christ. They're they're just handing cash out. It, it's it's absolutely ridiculous over at Apple TV Plus right now, right? Like they fucking dude, that shit is fucking just shit's for real. Uh, teeny bit like that sitcom BBC made with Matt LeBlanc. Um, I don't even remember it. Uh, but yeah, it, it I said, I foundation's good. It's worth watching. Um, oh, I started watching the invasion series. They've got this alien invasion series that they're trying to do. It's trash. It's fucking trash. It's a total whiff. It's a total fucking miss. If you are looking at Apple uh, Apple TV stuff and you're like, oh, hey, an alien invasion show that's told from like, it's it's a Rashomon. It's told from multiple perspectives. Um, You're like, oh, I, I like it. It's trash. Just don't, don't bother. You, it's, give it a shot if you want. But don't come at, don't come at me when you fucking, you're like, holy fuck, man, was that a waste of time? I fast forwarded through like all of it. It just skip, 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 skip. Still boring. Skip, 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 skip. 
Still boring. Skip, 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 skip. It's, it's trash. <laughs> it's a total mess. And I, I wonder how much they spent on it. Like how many tens of millions they spent on it. Um, Crix, it, Mythic Quest didn't hit the mark for me, but it's funny. It, it didn't, it didn't hook me, but it's solid work. Oh, is that, um, the one with the circular language shit, right? The multi, the aliens due to their linguistic set, see time is a, 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 not as a linear path, but a circular path. And so once she understands that, the, the starts getting told from different perspectives. Yeah. I don't remember the name, but I remember the plot arrival. Caboose has got it. Arrival. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing a lecture by the linguist who was responsible for the creation of that shit. Fascinating because I, I did con langs and stuff like that. I'm always interested in a circular language is an interesting concept. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a rival. <clears throat> but yeah, if you, if you, if you like grand stories, uh, I, I didn't enjoy C. So far, I concur with all of your analyses of TV and movies that rarely happen. See, bit of win. Wait. Great minds, bit of win. Great minds. Let's just fucking, we'll just do that, right? Great minds. Um. So, bit of win, did you try that fucking invasion show? Is that what, like, did you watch, did you try and watch that shit too? Because holy fuck, man. Yes. Marvin. Um cuz man that was rough. Like I know it's not done yet, but it's done. It's fucking done. I ain't finishing that shit. I wasted enough time skipping through that show. Whew. That was that was rough. Um I'm not giving it I'm giving it one more episode not promising. Dude, it was it's just fucking stupid. Like this is the this is my entire thought process process watching every single one of those episodes, Bedouin. Get to the point. There get to the fucking invasion. It's called invasion, caboose. <laughs> it's called invasion. Yeah. Uh it's, it's bad. I, that's in my entire thought process or the entire thing was just get to the fucking point. Like, it, it, can we just do this already? Yeah, so far, no invasion. <laughs> it, it just, oh God, it, it's, 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 it's rough. It's rough. It's a total mess. It's a total mess. Yeah, Sam, Sam Neil gets fucking offed. I think he gets offed. Like, I think he's dead. I was expecting him to, like, have an eye flutter or something there in that holding shot they did. I was like, oh, shit, it's going to infect him and they're going to be a mutt. No, no, he's just fucking dead. All right. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it's a swing and a miss. It's a swing and a miss. But, yeah. Um... What else did they, they've, they've been a, hang on, let me, okay. So John Stewart's back on Apple TV plus that alone makes me a happy man. Um, John Stewart being back. The problem with John Stewart, by the way, is the, the show title. Um, fucking foundation, totally worth watching. Um, Acapulco, totally worth watching. Uh, it's about, I don't know, some dude who somehow struck it rich, but started off in like Acapulco as a poor, uh, worker at a resort. And he's telling his son, his like ne'er do well, fucking like 12 year old, something like that. Um, son, the story of how he came up and it's, it's legitimately, it's sweet. It's funny. It's a good time. Um, let's see. What else is worth watching on there um, is from my position. There's a bunch of stuff. Dude, if you got kids, 
um, Apple TV Plus has a lot of like decent kids programming, like for real. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, don't. Um, um, I have no idea, Karina. I have no idea. It's included in my 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 package with Apple. My uh, my service package with Apple includes Apple TV Plus. It's just they throw it in. So I have no idea what the cost is. Um, but honestly, just getting access to John Stewart again. I mean, I, I yeah. Um, let me see cost they'll throw in three months if you fucking buy an apple tv um it used to be a year it's five bucks a month it's a it's five bucks a month after a seven day trial but if you buy a new apple device you get three months free um but if you get apple one um then it's it's just included uh, uh, and Apple One, you can share with five other, uh, uh, like five other people, uh, up to yeah, up to five other people. No, there's five included. Okay, so Apple Apple One is Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, Apple Arcade, uh, which is their game service, A iCloud Plus, which will give you two terabytes of storage, Apple News Plus, and Apple Fitness Plus. Um, and a family package is 20 bucks a month and you can share that with five, uh, with five other people. Uh, no, Bitwin, I am not. I don't use Apple computers. I think they are absolute dog shit. I, I have a custom built rig, um, that I have shown on stream before. Her name is Sarah Swati, uh, Sarah Swati. Uh, yes, named after a, a Hindu goddess, the goddess of knowledge, education, and learning. Uh, let me try and find. Uh, let's see. There you go. Nope. Their, their computers are absolute dog shit and I would never use one. Um, yeah, and that's how you, what, 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 Bitwin, it's the size of a mini fridge and it is a very hefty, is she, she's a thick bitch. She's a thick bitch and I love her to death. Um, what, what is Apple's niche that they, they're good at that like, um, like, because I'm pretty sure we can build anything they they have for like four thousand dollars cheaper. Like I I I do not believe in their computers at all. Their computers are shit, especially for their their price point. Photo design and editing. I mean, What software on Mac OS that allows digital photo work isn't on a Windows platform? Like legitimately, what, 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 what exists over there that doesn't exist on a Windows platform? Oh God. Yeah, Charlotte, when they did the line of demarcation, yeah, marketing and sales tend to have the Apple products. It's only because Adobe prioritized their Mac OS version over their PC version. It's not because Mac is better at it. There you go. And by the way, everybody should be migrating away from Adobe anyway. Adobe's turned to shit too. Like Adobe is absolutely batshit insane these days. I uh, software that I don't want to was what to do. Give me wrong. I'm gonna turn like, but, yeah, but what? What? I need an example.
Like, what can you do on a Mac that you can't do on a PC? And for $4,000 cheaper. Like, that's the issue. We priced, I priced this shit out on stream one time. Like, that, that legitimately, it's... I mean, I can, for $4,000, I can fucking, uh, you actually can bid a win. You absolutely can do that. It, it takes a little effort, but you can, you can install Mac OS over on a, uh, on a PC. It's called a Hackintosh usually. get GarageBand and cry over games being shit. Games are shit on Mac. Like, absolute dog shit. The games are better on Linux than they are on a Mac OS. That's a fucking mar a, a watermark if there ever was. Holy shit. Right? When Linux is a better gaming machine now than, uh, than Mac OS still. Wow. I... Oof. No games here, please. Only work. Exactly. All Macs basically have boot camp and dual boot windows. Oof. Oh, has Apple ever gotten their shit together with their, their mouse? Do they have a decent, or do they just rely on Logitech to make a decent mouse for them? I, I literally, like, I, this is how little I follow about their bullshit still. Like, have they managed to make a halfway decent mouse yet? The last I'd seen, they made that fucking plane of a mouse. Like, that was fucking this thin, and you're like, what? How is this? Oof. Yeah, that's, dude, those Mac, Apple made mice are fucking rough. They're fucking rough. I don't know what their deal with that is, but like they just, ah, fuck it. You don't need to use a mouse. That <laughs> fucking. Yeah. The last I had seen, they put the charging point port underneath it too. Like, legitimately, they put the charging port under here. Like. I, 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 their mouse design has always been kind of fucking just fucky. I, I don't know what their deal has been from the beginning. Like, it's like, why do you guys just hate mouse users? fine if you have tentacle hands yeah that I've always wondered about that why they have such shitty mice <laughs> they're made for shaven ball sacks not hands fair enough um I mean I, I, did you have an issue sunshine because apparently, like, you got a bit of a bee in your bonnet about that. Um, nonsense, it's a... It's Snake Night. We got a bunch of fucking snake movies. Because they're a form over function company. Swoosh, you're right. You're right. You're right. We know it. <clears throat> it's Snake Night. We got a bunch of fucking shitty snake movies. We decided last week. Uh, Snakes on a Plane is in that list. Uh, so is Anaconda. So is Hard Ticket to Hawaii. We've actually got three snake movies we can avail ourselves of if we want. 
You know what? That's an underrated movie for twos. Fucking Evolution with David Duchovny and Stifler. Sean, Sean William Scott? I forget his fucking name. Stifler. Um, um, yeah, um, fucking that's an underrated movie. It's a, that's a solid fucking movie. I, I, I've watched it a few times. It's a good movie. Orlando Jones. Okay, so I didn't want to... I, sunshine no worries catch you later um i didn't want to just see, i was like i remember stifler i remember x files but i could not place i'm like i didn't want to just outright say and the black guy because <laughs> i couldn't remember who the actor was i'm like oh, orlando fucking jones yeah i'm like jesus christ um and the and um and uh, the other guy who used to be super fucking heavy and now is absolutely ripped, I forget his name too. Um, but the, the fucking I forget who that dude is. Um, but yeah, that dude used to be fat as fuck, and now he's absolutely just built like a brick fucking house. Nathan, Ethan, Ethan something, Ethan something. Supply. Ethan fucking Supply. Ethan fucking Supply. That dude fucking turned it around. Like, for realsies. Okay, that dude on the right is this dude now, right? Like he, he straight up fucking, yeah, Ethan fucking Supply. He put in the work. Yeah, every time I think of that dude, I'm like, holy shit, man. I, I have nothing but the utmost respect for him as a human being. He put in the fucking work. He didn't just lose that weight. He kicked that fucking weight to the curb. <laughs> he he picked that fucking weight up and threw it like Uncle Phil, right? Like, get the fuck out of here, bitch, right? Like, that dude, he put in the work. Yeah, that was not easy to do. Losing that weight unto itself is a huge deal. But to replace that weight with just the stacked body he's got now, yeah, that's... That dude put in work. Do you think he can see the sailboat yet? I sure fucking hope he can, man. I sure hope he can. But it's not a sailboat. It's a schooner. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I, I, that, that dude fucking. <sighs> Here we go. This is, this, this, this is my favorite, like, pairing of photos for him. This is my favorite pairing. Uh, Beasticle, it's a line from the movie. It's literally the line from the movie. That was It's not bougie. It's just, it's literally a quote from the movie. The little girl walks up and goes, it's a skit. Yeah. Uh, these right now, Korea, I, I'm not feeling sexy at all. Like this is, this is part of where the depression is coming from. So let's just, no. Um, but holy shit, like I have nothing but respect for him just as a human being like that, that the amount of work and the dedication it takes to transform oneself in that way. That's, that's huge. A 
thought I said shot. She said scooter. Now I feel dumb. Yeah, no, it's schooner. It's a type of sailboat. Um, yep, yeah, rep. No, I, I, I think, dude, I. Kevin Smith is a good writer and director, and filmmaker. I, I, I legitimately think. I think I think shitting on Kevin Smith as like some like sophomoric filmmaker is a shit out. I think it's somebody who doesn't they just did I think it's like shitting on Nickelback at this point. Right? Like for film nerds in like uh, like film degree and media degree types to be like, oh fucking Kevin Smith is fucking sophomoric and he's, you know, immature and infantile in his humor. It's like, you know, one, you're ignoring the breadth of what he's made. Um, you just what you're just gonna ignore fucking like fucking Tusk and Red State and shit like that, right? And two, like, dude, that was him analyzing the world. That was him trying to figure the world out. That was him exploring his beliefs and growing up and the things he experienced and trying to process them into film, right? Like, just like, come on. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think shitting on Kevin Smith is just a, a cheap fucking shot. The dude's really good at what he does. Um, and he, and, and, and he seems like a legitimately nice human being. Oh, and he's one of the, uh, the best storytellers. He's, he's a very good storyteller. As, as somebody who likes to consider himself a storyteller, I respect the art. He's a very good storyteller. Um, so, like, yeah. Hundred uh, percent. My film course made me sure they I'm uh, sure they included people so much. Some people were comfortable saying they were in there just because they like Marvel series. Nice some people into artsy deep stuff. Nice. Enjoy Dogma. Dogma's fucking brilliant. Dogma's great. Come on. Uh, fair enough, nonsense. Um, Tusk, fucking brilliant, dark as hell though. Hey, like, right? You know, you make fucking, you make mall rats, you make Tusk. You gotta... Fucking, oh, George Carlin. He's also responsible for the travesty of the He-Man reboot? Interesting. I, that I didn't know, but... Sorry, Kevin. You got He's got to have a flop from time to time, right? You gotta. You can't. You can't hit. You can't hit every pitch. You can't hit every pitch. Um, he's also part of making nerd culture popular. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, Chaotica. For sure, he's responsible for a portion of that. Um, Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, a lot of people. Jay and Silent Bob will split the room really quickly. Jay and Silent Bob will split the split the room really fucking quickly. Uh, what's Antifa's greatest accomplishment, accomplishment so far? Winning World War II. Um, so, yeah, like some people either like, look, you're either comfortable with the, the sophomoric humor or you're not. If you're comfortable with it, if you're like, look, not everything has to be, uh, you know, a Hodorowski surrealist film, right? You can, you can have, you could just revel in it for a minute and fucking crack some dick and fart jokes. It's fine, right? Like it's okay. There's nothing lesser than about it. It's, it's an equal type of humor. And so, like, if you're if you're comfortable enough in yourself, if you're if confident enough, then yeah, like you tend to like yeah, fucking Janet Silent Bob's funny as shit, man. I am the click commander. Come on, that shit's funny. That's just funny. Ease off. Cock puncher, one of Mark Hamill's best roles, second to the Joker. Um. Yeah, Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Yeah, with her. It's a, it's a fucking softball to start with. Um, uh, 
as a Brit, we do somehow always appreciate a fart joke somehow. Um, uh, for two, in no way, shape, or form did that imply that. Um, especially since, you know, uh, anti-fascista, right? Like, that's anti Antifa isn't even U.S. born, really. So I recognize that fully, uh, fully unto itself. Rules of the road. Yes, the fucking unwritten, unspoken rules of the road. Fucking Carlin. God, I fucking miss that man. I miss that man, but he would have had a heart attack on stage watching Trump anyway. Oh, fucking for two. So, okay. Um, yeah, he would have had a heart attack during the Trump presidency. Like legitimately, I, I truly believe Carlin would have fucking gotten on stage and just ranted and raved and fucking croaked like live on air or some shit. Like, <laughs> it's like ah. yeah. Oh, God, I miss that man. No, he wouldn't have because he transcended all of that. He always did. Wagonator. He survived multiple cancellations up to and including the United States government trying to cancel him. So as much as you want to try and take that like anti-woke shit uh, and you spin it to uh, and use Carlin, he hated people like you. Just know that. Carlin was super fucking lefty. Right? Carlin was super fucking lefty. He had an opinion on freedom of speech, yes, but he was super fucking lefty. He hated right-wingers. He hated social conservatives. He fought his, he, he spent his life fighting against those types. He absolutely despised people like you. Yeah. So just, you know. Instead of trying to co-opt somebody like George Carlin, maybe use somebody who didn't spend his entire life critiquing people like you. So, you know, something along those lines. Uh-huh, he did. Because he knew how to read a room, Rev. Right? Carlin wasn't an inhuman. He's just like, oof, that's bad taste to do that right now. If you researched, if you did your research, if you did your research, yo, I fucking love it when they say that. If you did your research, if you did a lick of reading outside of your fucking hidey hole, uh, yeah, because he was human. He knew how to read a room. He was quite the master at reading a room, in fact. Um, Beastical? Yes. But pretty much. It was along the same lines of reasoning as um, fucking MLK. That the problem with the liberals is that they allow the fucking social conservatives to do what they do. That they're, they're, uh, they're uh, an enabler in the system. That's, that's, that was his critique, usually. Oh, he hated kids. You guys would shit your diapers if he told some of his jokes today. Uh, Wagonator, I played live on air a Doug Stanhope bit where he literally used racism towards the Indian subcontinent to make a critique of gang rape. Uh, that is widespread on the Indian subcontinent and people loved it. So maybe, maybe, maybe take your straw man fallacy and shove it up your ass. It, it's not the content. It's the fact that we knew Carlin was actually intelligent and making a critique Behind the uh, the uh, behind the racy topic, the likes of fucking Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro just repeat bigoted racist talking points and then go ha ha ha. It's but it's a joke, guys, without it actually being funny. See, that's the thing. When they're legitimate comedians, they tend to have legitimate social critiques, and they have a level of analysis that is beyond the likes of most social conservatives. Uh, 
Uh, Crick's not long. I mean, it depends who made the laptop. Yeah. Except Carlin's joke would have been funny, Wagonator. Carlin's joke would have been funny. That was the problem. Chappelle is mediocre now. What happened? What happened, man? He's mediocre. Chappelle used to be a fucking goat. Chappelle used to be a fucking goat. He's mediocre now. And you can't be doing that sort of shit. Carlin's own words. People say you can't make a, uh, a joke about rape. I say that the, uh, the joke just has to be funnier than the topic you're talking about. Right? This was Carlin himself speaking about the philosophy of comedy. He said, think about El uh, Porky Pig raping Elmer Fudd. Funny. He said, that's the problem, though. He said, is that a hack comedian comes out and does a rape joke, and the joke is less funny than the topic is serious. And so it doesn't work. But if the joke is funnier then the topic is serious, then the joke works. See, this is Carlin's insight as one of the best co uh, comedians and social critics of all time. And that's what people like you don't understand is because you have no grounding or understanding of comedy itself as an art and a practice, both within writing and performing. You come at it from the chud side of things. Whereas someone like me approaches it as the art and as a performer himself, right? Like I've studied and listened to what Carlin has to say about these things. I've listened to what some of the greatest minds in comedy say about these sorts of things. Yes, you can joke about anything and you can make anything funny. But the thing is, is you have to make it funny. Chappelle's joke was mediocre, which split the room. See, Carlin's philosophy was that the comedian's job is that, yes, okay, you're going to inevitably offend a few in your audience. He said, but what your job is, is to find the line in the room and then get the audience to cross it with you. Chappelle just saw the line and said, fuck half the audience. This is not the behavior of one of the greatest comedians of all time. This is the behavior of a mediocre comedian at best. And at worst, a teenage edgelord. Right? Like, this isn't the philosophy of one of the greatest comedians of all time. And who said I was offended? I think it's a shit. Yeah. You know what offended me? It was a shit joke. Beyond that, I don't care. I'm a stand-up comedy nerd. All right? Like, I've studied stand-up comedy. What? Uh, uh, yeah. You know what offended me? It was a mediocre joke. Ugh. From Dave Chappelle. He's better than that joke. His... You know what the, the uh, fucking, the problem is? Is his writer didn't write it. See, this is the issue. Remember all that stuff from back in the Chappelle show days? That's all Neil Brennan. That's all Neil Brennan. Like the stuff that we identify as some of the greatest stand-up comedy bits and some of the greatest sketches from Dave Chappelle, he had a writing partner for that. That's Neil Brennan. And so that's what's missing in that formula is Neil's gone. And all you're hearing is Dave. And it lacked something. It lacked a greatness. As a writing team, the two of them are brilliant. And by the way, I don't think Neil is that great on his own either. I think together, they're what makes them hilarious. No, Neil Brennan. <sighs> Maniac, Doug Stanhope is the greatest living comic. 
Period. End of story. He is the he is the favorite comedian. When you ask your comedians who their favorite comedians are, Doug Stanhope is the one that comes up, right? He's the comedian's comedian. He will never have the widespread appeal that that he should, but he's the comedian's comedian. The fact that that yes, that bit about his mother dying is one of the darkest fucking things put to and it's amazing it's it's it, quite literally as you put it laughing and crying and swapping back and forth between the two do you know how extraordinarily difficult of an art that is it is he's he's the greatest living comedian um stanhope mom's suicide story is good no it's 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 high art it's high art. And that's that's why, like, if you want a funny trans joke, go to Stanhope. Stanhope has funny trans material, and he's not punching down. Right? Stanhope has, Stanhope started doing trans material like 20 years ago. Right? Comes up on fu up fucking stage in an audience, sort of ha hung over from, uh, from the night before. And he goes, you know who's tempting me these days? Okay, this is after a long series of fucking just degeneracy bits and shit. He says, you know who's, you know who's tempting me these days? I was like, I don't know. He goes, the trannies. And the audience pulls back. We're talking like aughts here. Aughts, all right? Stanhope is talking about being sexually attracted to transsexuals on stage, he uses the trannies term because that's the only thing the fucking audience would know, right? He goes, ah, the trannies. And the audience just recoils in fucking, you can feel the energy just draw back like, how dare he, right? Oh my God, you know, ugh, right? And he's like, oh, fuck you. He literally just goes at the audience. He's like, fuck you. They make them from scratch now too. They're fucking great. He said, they get the whole tits, the hair, the makeup, the the tit implants, the ass. He goes, and plus, besides, who cares if they have a dick? I was going to try and poon them in the ass anyway. He said, like I, like I give a shit about, uh, about how you feel about me. My self-respect is not from you. Right? My self-esteem isn't from you. So fuck you people too. Right? Like he just straight up fucking goes at it. And by the end of the bit, it's fucking hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. He's telling this story about how he like, he, he eats at this, um, sidewalk breakfast cafe and he goes i see you know i see him coming home from the club in the in the morning i go to this cafe because it's the only one that lets me smoke outside he goes oh what a free country we live in and he's like you know i see him go there for breakfast i see him going home you know at the end of the day and fuck it it's like there you go it's a funny fucking bit and he's admitting to being sexually attracted to them at the same time yeah and yeah and ego checking the audience up front like a fucking legend yeah, like it is, it is legit. And it's like 20 years ago now. So like, yeah, you want a funny trans bit, go to fucking somebody who actually knows how to tell a joke. Go to Doug Stanhope. He's the goat anyway. Greatest living comedian, plain and simple. So yeah, that's the issue. Um... Oh my God, you like Amy Schumer. Oh, well, now we know not to... Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Pookie. Poo-boo. I don't even know how, what, who? Amy Schumer? God, I hope not, Carpe. I sure hope not. <laughs> I 
All right. Um, what's my thought on Chris Titus? He's a he's a he's a perfectly functioning road comic. He's a perfectly functional road comic. He knows how to structure a joke. He knows how to deliver a punchline. He knows how to structure uh, a set. Um, fucking, uh, he's a he's a functional road comic. Yeah, that's 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 Titus knows he he's yeah he's he's mediocre. He's he's middle of the road. Um, nothing about. Um, <gasps> baloney. Have fun. Dave Attell is fucking solid. Dave Attell is good people. Fucking Dave Attell. I respect. Baloney. Fucking enjoy that. Enjoy that set. Um. Yeah. Fucking D- Dave is fucking good. Good fucking comedian. Yeah. He gets it. Dave gets it. Um. Yeah. Fucking. Third time seeing him. Fuck yeah. Um. Yeah, Christopher Titus is just sort of middle of the road. He's 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 like white toast with butter. That's perfectly fine. It'll you'll get a laugh. You'll get a laugh. It's it's a it's a perfectly acceptable food stuff, right? But it's not going to be that homemade fucking strawberry jam that your grandma used to make and put on some like fresh made bread and she'd like toast it up and some like actual homemade brioche that your grandma fucking rolled out the night before and fucking toasts up for you and fucking puts that jam from the strawberry she grew herself. It ain't going to be that. That ain't going to be Titus. But, you know, from every fucking time, you know, for every fucking day, you know, occasionally just some quick sliced white bread with some butter on it. It fucking hits the spot. That's Christopher Titus. So, um, yeah, I'm not watching or listening to that. He doesn't get, he doesn't get airtime on my show. Um, and in fact, like, you know what? Yeah, I know. Like, that's not a thing. Um, yeah, no, there's nobody like Carlin. Carlin is singular. Carlin was Carlin. There's a reason we refer to him as Carlin. Um, he's he's singular in instance. Um, Hicks was the closest we got to Jesus at his angriest. Um, I don't like Eddie. I don't like Eddie. In his prime specifically, I don't like Eddie. Corey. I think he was very bad-spirited and bad-natured about a lot of fucking shit he did. I don't... Um, Big J, though? Big J knows how to work an audience. It, he Big J works best in small clubs. He knows how to work an audience. I have respect for him. Um, Mitch... Mitch was his generation's um, one-liner. Mitch was the master of a one-liner. Uh, Maniac, I wish I could take credit for it, but it is actually a description by Brett Butler, the female comedian and actress, who was probably Bill Hicks's closest friend. And she, that is her description after she did a documentary after he died. And she said straight up, she said, Bill always wanted to be Jesus at his angriest. And I think he, I think he delivered. That was, so yeah, I I wish I could take credit for it, but yeah, it's Brett Butler. It's actually her quoting it's her, her describing how Bill wanted to be on stage. Yeah, that was it was intentional um, on his part. He wanted to be Jesus at his anger. He wanted to be the Jesus of the cleansing of the temple. He wanted to be in there flipping tables and chasing motherfuckers out with a, a with a horsetail whip. Because remember, Bill Hicks almost became a pastor. That's you got to remember. Bill Hicks was that fucking close to being a pastor. So it was pastor or stand-up comedian 
and we got Bill Hicks. Yeah. He wanted to be Jesus at his angriest, and I think he I think he accomplished his mission. And I think in a where in a weird roundabout way, he kind of walked the path of Christ. He even got taken out early. Uh, Lenny Bruce is fucking brilliant. And Peaky, if you don't know the story, Lenny Bruce, when he was arrested for, uh, for saying obscenities on stage, that night, the very night Lenny Bruce was hauled out of the club in handcuffs by the police, a young man sat in the audience watching that set. That young man's name, George Carlin. Facts. Truth. Yeah. The night Lenny Bruce was arrested for being for working blue, George Carlin was sitting in the audience. Yeah. It it all things, right? Ripples and waves, ripples and waves. It's fucking it's weird as shit, but yeah, the one who would take the seven seven dirty words up to the Supreme Court and spend his life fighting that fight was sitting in the audience that night uh george did george transformed um for those of you who only grew up with old george maniac take care of yourself thank you kind of a fan of him too um for those of you that only ever seen old george carlin i mean like old george carlin um, young George Carlin was an entirely different event. Young George Carlin looked like this. This was George Carlin in his youth performing. George Carlin used to wear a three-piece suit and he would work clean. He'd work dinner clubs with, with stand-up citizens and, you know, men and women, uh, husbands and wives that were, you know, yeah, he, he was, he, he was an entirely different entity. Um, and then, well, the George we know was born. This is the George that most of you know. This is, this is post weed and post acid George. I mean, it, it, nonsense is true. Then he smoked some weed. It is true. He he got embedded in the 60s. He participated. He was there for it. And George changed. He became something else entirely. Um, he was... Counterculture. He was a critic. He did. Carpe, he did. Um, yeah, and then the 70s came and the 80s. Carlin did a lot of cocaine. Um, here's a fun fact. Here's something that you'll enjoy. Um, if you go back and watch the very first episode of Saturday Night Live, George Carlin is the host. And per his own admission, this is from George's own mouth, if you go and watch the, uh, the first episode ever of Saturday Night Live, George Carlin is coked out of his brain the entire show. He is absolutely spun. He's just going backstage and fucking doing rails the entire fucking show. He is coked out up beyond belief so there you go if you want to see george carlin high on coke go watch the very first episode of saturday night live ever um bisco i don't know for certain but potentially yeah um like i said i've studied these fucking people i'm a stand-up nerd y'all like this is this is i stand-up is my release it's my thing, right? I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I, I don't have whatever it is that 
makes it possible. Timing, delivery, I don't know. I'm not, I can't, I, I suck at it. I'm, I'm, but I know the business in and out. I know the art in and out. I know the greats. I've studied them. I know how and why that I know the philosophies. I know the methodologies. I know the practices. I'm a stand up nerd. Bobcat is amazing. Not so much as a stand up rev, but Bobcat is Bobcat Goldthwaite is legitimately a creative force unto himself. Um, writing and directing was his calling. That goofball fucking character he did is, I mean, it's a thing. It got him, dude, that kid, that goofball character made him, made him the, gave him the breathing room. It gave him the breathing room, right? Credit where credit's due. But Bobcat's genius lies in his, his writing and directing. He's really good at that stuff. Um... Thoughts on, uh, wait, 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 wait. Thoughts on Jim Jeffries. Jim potential, Jim straddles a line between edgelord and genius. And it depends on what day he wakes up as to which, which side of that line he'll be holding his weight. Sometimes Jim is just trying to get a rise out of you and it's a little bit fucking edgelordy, Right. But sometimes Jim has truly amazing storytelling. The high water mark for him is the muscular dystrophy story. He will never beat it. There's, there's no beating that story. Taking his friend with muscular dystrophy to an Australian whorehouse to get laid for the first time. It's genius. It's, 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 it's the art of storytelling, right? Like it is truly a beautiful piece. I, I will forever honor Jim Jeffries for that story. It, it, it is. It, basically, it's a perfect set, really. No, it really is. It, that, that routine is high art. There's no way around that. And you can't take that from him. So no matter how many fucking cringe bits he does, no matter how many fucking shitty hacky bits he does, we know he's capable, right? We know he's capable of the, the high art. So you have to, you have to ask risk in that uh, as that sadly, Carlin was Louis CK's hero and idol. I don't see the problem with Louis CK. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I understand that problem. I get that problem. What's the problem with him as a comedian? Right. As a, as a man, I understand the problem with Louis C.K. But as a comedian and a writer, what's the issue? Yeah, he's genius. He's brilliant at what he does. Yeah, he's 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 absolutely brilliant at what he does. Separate the man from the art. Yeah, no worries, Karina. We'll we'll walk you through it. Corey, thank you. Yeah, no, he's he's absolutely a genius. There's no way around that. And he was right to to look up to Carlin. They're in the same class. Guys, Carlin was a sh Carlin was kind of fucked too. He didn't he didn't go around and fucking corner like female comics and wave his dick at him. But trust me, like he was, he was fucked up in the head too. All the greats are right. Like he, Carlin just, just routed his correctly into like cocaine and opiates and like alcohol abuse and shit like that. Right. Like he just, he turned it inwardly. Louis made the mistake of letting some of it get directed at other people, which is his mistake. And he will forever have to atone for it. There's no defending it. That's the worst kind of mistake you can make. If you're gonna if you're gonna have that that inward, inward, pointed at yourself, not someone else. Louis pointed at someone else, and he, like I said, he will forever have to atone for that. Um, but as far as a comedian goes, he's genius. There's no way around that. There's no there's no taking that away from him. He is truly brilliant at what he does. He tells, 
He has a routine that is one of the like high watermarks for modern era com comedic storytelling. He managed to say in a single sentence punchline the C word, the F word, and the N word and get a theater full of people to laugh and not be offended. Nobody talks about the time that fucking Louis C.K. said the C word, the F word, and the N word all together as a punchline. With the hard R, by the way. With the hard R. It is a genius piece of comedic methodology. Do you understand? He spent 30, 45 minutes creating a circumstance in which he could do that and have people understand it's funny. It's not offensive. It's actually funny. And it's a fucking fat, balding, middle-aged white dude saying it. It took work to develop that routine. It's one of the most genius bits of, or set of, it's actually a set. It's one of the most genius sets told in the modern era. It, it is told during woke scolding era. All right, this is, this is, this joke was created and told on stage in front of a live audience for recording during the era of woke scolding. All right, that is extraordinarily difficult to do. And he does it effortlessly. The man is a genius comedian. He's just a shit human being. That's all. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, but, yeah, as... as Yeah, Chappelle didn't, er, Chappelle didn't do the work. Uh, thoughts on Bill Burr? Bill Burr's funny as fuck. He's not genius level, but Bill Burr is funny as fuck. That, that routine about fucking women needing to get punched in the face from time to time. Like, y'all should just punch each other in the face. Um, and then, like a psycho little robot. Dude, he's got some funny fucking routines. Um, his, his pieces on the Catholic Church are always hilarious. Oh, fucking. Uh, open GL. I always quote, um, I always quote George Carlin about Dennis Miller. Dennis, George Carlin was asked about Dennis Miller one time. Somebody fucking asked him, he said, well, what do you think about Dennis Miller these days? And George doesn't even say the man's name. He just looks at the fucking interviewer and goes, I'll tell you one thing. When a comedian starts to take themselves seriously, they cease to be funny. There you go. That's, dude, that's, that's fucking ruthless. That's fucking ruthless. That's George fucking Carlin. Just straight up saying, yeah, he ain't funny. Fuck him. He, back in the HBO, um, back in the HBO days, Dennis Miller was kind of funny. Yeah, he was he was serviceable. Yeah, oof. Yeah, for, like it's an oof in general, but from George Carlin, right? Like imagine the greatest. Like imagine something you you're good at and you enjoy doing, right? Now imagine the person who does that the greatest of all time. Right? Like literally walking into the room and saying you're trash. <laughs> right? It's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> yeah, it was rough. It was fucking brutal. Um, is that, um, is that Mr. Show? Um, yeah, it's Mr. Show. I, I have seen a fair amount of it. Um, I prefer, I prefer David, uh, David Cross and Bob Odenkirk on their own. I think David Cross is a, a, a really good stand up comedian. Uh, it's like Michael Jordan telling a young player their fundamentals are weak. It's rough. It's rough. Yeah, it was... Oof. Fucking George Carlin just fucking murdered you, bro. How do you feel about that? <laughs> um, He was. He was a pretentious hack. Um, bit of one. He was serviceable during the HBO era, but... Yeah, he's a pretentious hack. Um, yep. 
Yeah, Bill Burr does have a, a black wife and multiracial children. Um, oh, sorry, maniac. Hold on. Let me be nice about it. I hope Maniac was still here for it. Oh, no. Y yeah, for Toos, did you not know? Uh, did you not know that? Yeah, you need to, you need to, you got shit to watch for, for Toos. You got shit to watch. Um. Ugh. Oh, so they rebooted it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you know what? Actually, I think I have seen Hannah Gatsby. Um, let me look her up. I want to make sure, but I think I know who you're talking about. Yep. I know who this is. Um, Oh God, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree. Shit, 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 shit. I'm going to agree with Hassan. I'm going to agree with Hassan. Oh my God. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with Hassan. Done. <laughs> Hassan had a based fucking take, right? Here's your take. They both suck. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not a fan i'm not a fan um uh, i uh let's here i will i will give i will give i will give the yeah even a broken clock and all that um this is gonna be bad it's gonna be bad. All right. I just still can't get over that there's something. Hang on. This is gonna be rough. Thing inside of me, in a very particular part of my body, called the pouch of Douglas. <laughs> it's fucking weird, borderline. Pouch of Douglas. <laughs> it's fucking weird, borderline. Not okay. <sighs> but it is also a reminder that we do live in a world where everything has been named by men. Like everything. I mean, everything. no, but I understand hyperbolic statement man, for Dr. James sake. Douglas, who was an 18th century Scottish man midwife. What an uncomfortable collection of demographics that is. Like, <laughs> do not headline your LinkedIn with that. That is a mistake. Now, it was named after Dr. James Douglas because apparently he found it first. What a day. What a day he must have been having. <laughs> Just rummaging around a lady cadaver, rummy drummage. Hobbies were different then. He must have just found her funny that's zip a, and then That's a solid tag. There, I'll, void, no I'll give credit on that point, tag. Dr. James Douglas must have thought, well, this is it. <laughs> this is my short legacy. Uh, yes. Yes. Beastical, her entire fucking routine is it, Paul. Yeah. Or there, I don't know. Is Hannah? I don't know Hannah's fucking f fucking pronouns, but yeah, Hannah's Hannah's entire routine is always like Douglas is my first dog. Douglas is my first dog as an adult. I had lots of dogs when I was growing up. Our family went through them a bit. We lived on a busy road. I have what's called high functioning autism, which is a terrible name for what I have because it gives the impression that I function highly. <laughs> I do not. Her or she. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, I don't like her comedy, but like, I don't, I don't need to be a dick about it, right? Like, that's it's just. <sighs> not a fan. I'm not a fan. I think that. I think here's 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 my critique as the stand-up nerd, right? As as the stand-up nerd. She understands comedy. She's a comedian. 
I'm not going to sit here and say that she's not funny. I'm not going to say that she doesn't understand how to structure a joke. I'm not going to say she doesn't understand how to do a punchline or a tag back. She understands comedy. She's a comedian. I think I'm not her demographic. I think I'm not her target. And I think that the majority of the populace probably aren't her target demographic to start with. And therefore, you are going to struggle to find the people that do align with that comedic set. And I understand that and I can empathize that with somebody who like adores Doug Stanhope. He refers to himself as fetish comedy. The people who most people aren't into him, but the people who are into him are really fucking into him. Right. It's in that sort of thing. It's a niche comedy. Uh, It's a niche topical uh, topical comic. Right. I respect it. Um, it's not going to work for me. She's by, she's, she's, Hannah Gadsby is miles better than Dave Coulier. Miles. She's an actual comic. Right? Like, I get that. I think, I think, oh God, I almost, I almost kind of want to say it this way. Um, yeah, like she's, I'm not her target. So it's not going to get me a lot of the time. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, And I think Dave hasn't been funny in probably 15 years. Yeah, like, I mean, it's nothing against her. It's just against the topics that she covers. I bet if she, I bet if Hannah Gadsby talked about something in my realm... I'd laugh. I don't think she's a bad comedian. I think that, like, the shit she's talking about isn't going to land with me. So, like, if something, she hit something in my area, I'd, she, she's a perfectly functioning comedian. So, like, I'd laugh. But, yeah. That's, that's, that's sort of where I land on that topic. Chappelle's got a different issue. The reason they're both not funny are for different reasons, right? They're both not funny for different reasons entirely. One of these is an acceptable reason. One of these is not. That's all. Yeah. But there, it's, yeah, you can be funny for different, you can be funny or not funny for different reasons. That's entirely possible. And Zippy, I bet she's fucking, did she make you laugh? More power to you if she does. Um, Yeah. I did not know that, Rev. I did not know that. At least funny Australian. I don't know, Lennon. ScoMo's tried to drop some jokes before. <laughs> um, I can I can think of a few less funny Australians than Hannah Gadsby for sure. I have seen Jeff Foxworthy live. Jeff Foxworthy, I have seen live. He is the definition of a hack. He's made a shit ton of money doing it, but hacks usually do. Uh, he is, Jeff Foxworthy is the definition of a hack. Yeah. He's he's in that Seinfeld te- territory. Straight up. You make, you make millions of dollars being a hack. But he's, you know, Seinfeld. What's the deal with airline food? I don't fucking know. I don't know what the deal with airline food is, Jerry. Would you just shut the fuck up, right? Like Jeff Foxworthy is in that same camp of just like fucking. When you got catchphrases and shit, it's fucking rough, man. Um, Ron White. Ron White is a different thing entirely. Um. What about Jeff Dunham? Jeff Dunham is a prop comic. Oh, God. Lisa Lampanelli. Oh. Um, Jeff Dunham is a prop comic. 
Um, yeah, Tim mentioned is uh, mentioned is fucking he's solid. Um, <laughs> see, just laughing, just just reading it. Lug nut day. <laughs> okay. It's funny. It's funny. Um, yeah, look, it can be funny. It can be funny, but it's rough. It's rough being a prop comic. Um, no, I. No, I I can't. Right, like this this is this is this is this is my like stand up nerd shit. Right, like this is where I get snobby about stuff. This is this is where Jeff Dunham is. Jeff Dunham understands comedy. He understands comedy. So does Carrot Top, by the way. They both understand comedy. They're both functioning comedians. But the fact that they're both prop comics, no. Sorry, you're out. You're not a fucking stand-up anymore. You're barely a comedian anymore. You're you're like a puppeteer and shit. I don't I don't. You're a puppeteer that tells jokes. Sorry, you're off the list. It's caboose. There's a difference between um. You got to do it by yourself. And I, I know they're, they're by themselves, but n no, you need to, like, a stand-up comedian is a person who has a microphone in their hands, stands up in front of people, and makes them laugh. That's it. That's the art. Right? If you introduce some other element, it's a different performative experience. It's like the difference between theater and film and TV acting. They're all actors. They're all actors. Don't get me wrong. But it's a different thing. It's a different thing. And so there, there has to be a differentiation made. It's like stand up talking about how to uh, compete with jugglers. Holy shit. All right. Interesting. I'll, I'll hang if on I'm to it. I'm finding that. myself starting to get attracted to you since you started transitioning. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll give it a look. Um... Thank you, Gritty. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, they're not stand-ups. I'm a stand-up nerd. I, I like the art of the stand-up. There's plenty to be appreciated with what Carrot Top and Jeff Dunham do, but it's not stand-up comedy. So it's not my wheelhouse. Um, saw the one where he laughed at something the puppet said and it was just weird. Yeah. Um, oh, interesting. Didn't know that. Um, I'm highly curious about your take on John Mulaney. Um, I don't really have one. I don't really have one, Psycho. Um, I can think of maybe one of his routines. I think I can think of I think I can think of one of his routines. Um There's one really good stand-up bit by Mulaney, but I'm having trouble. Yeah, nonsense. This is Mulaney is forgettable. Mulaney is for, forgettable. That's that's my that's my thoughts about John Mulaney. Is he's forgettable. Hmm. Yeah. So there you go, Psycom. Um. Interesting. Yeah, the Ahmed stuff. Um. And also, uh, who is it that mentioned this? Um. <clears throat> oh, it was Lennon uh, about um fucking Stanhope talking about having to compete against jugglers. My, I still think about the Stanhope bit about um, where he just starts repeating the same thing over and over again. He like starts saying the same line over and over and over and over 
and the audience is so fucking confused. They're like, what the fuck is going on? He goes, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to demonstrate how irritating it is for me as a comedy writer to go up against songwriters, some of the laziest fuckers ever to call themselves writers. I have to create divergent trains of thought and I have to have cohesive statements and I have to take you to a specific place and it has to work structurally the whole way through and these fuckers just get to say the same three lines for four minutes and you dumb fuckers stand there and applaud them for it. Yeah, he just fucking loses it one set over over songwriters. He's like fucking fuck these lazy writers. Yeah. It's it's ah. Uh, ah, uh, Ludanovich. That's why I tell people to go watch the VOD. You don't have to participate live. Go watch the VOD on YouTube and you can just filter out the ads. Yeah, no, yeah, GL, yeah, no, it was just, it reminds me of that bit. Yeah, I, I, I love Stanhope complaining about shit that he has to deal with as a comedian. Like, just like, fuck this shit. Yeah. Um, tr truly the greatest living comic. Truly. I, 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 I don't doubt that in the least. His societal critiques, his insights... His complaints, his willingness to display himself openly, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, the, the man, there's no one that's his equal. He, he will, I mean, the, the lengths he'll go to get shit done is astounding. I do remember actually when Mar uh, like aspired to be like Carlin uh, back in the day and be a social critic, and then he became like uh, fucking Dennis Miller instead. It, it's j the only person to ever even get close to fucking following Carlin's trajectory is Louis C.K. Of the people who modeled themselves after him, Louis is the closest to actually land the fucking plane. And he had to go fucking spin his dick at female comedians because he was a dumb fuck. Later, Bidouin. Sleep well. Ugh, Charlotte. Mm, that's rough. Oh, nice. Nonsense. I know that one. Now we come to the potty. Everybody get naughty. Now look at, I'm looking at that shoddy and we all getting lit. There. There's your hook. Pay me, says Beasticle. Yeah, no. Like that's, it's easy being a songwriter. I, I know that sounds like condescending as shit, but like if you're writing pop songs, dude, they're super fucking simple. <laughs> like they're super fucking simple. Um, and they're getting simpler. There's been multiple studies. The, the lyrical content and the complexity of pop songs over the past decades has been getting more and more uh, simplistic rather than complex. Yeah. Ain't nobody writing like fucking like Neil Peart and shit anymore. The prog rock era is past. Charlotte, yeah, I feel you on that one. Yeah, oh yeah, Corey, like he was, he was like, he had that fucking BBC shit um, or IATV or forget, I the fucking UK shit where they, like the Oklahoma atheist sh stuff and yeah, yeah, they, like he did that routine, like he did that repeated series for them. Uh, you know what, GL? I mean, yeah, I think it's for different reasons than that, but yeah. Uh, well, a lot. I mean, sure. Why not? Yeah. That's why capitalism loves it. Pogs. Bill Amare. Cap uh, capturing of the arts is critical to maintaining capitalism's hold on the uh, social set. They have to do it. They have to do it. 
It's it's necessary. It's not just about the profit incentive for them. It's literally part of the program. You have to capture the arts as as it, it, the, to maintain capitalism's hold on society. Yeah, and it's profitable to boot, but it's necessary. It's part of the program. Increased media fractionalization beckons further simplification for mainstream hit success. Film history is political history. Most 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 history is just political history. Like right, like Charlotte, like like that's that's the truth of the matter, right? If we're talking about a topic, we have to understand the contextual nature of the topic, and that means we're going to have to discuss the times that the topic is discussed in, right? Something happening around the 1920s. Well, let's talk about the labor movement, right? If you're reading Upton Sinclair's, you know, um, the Jungle. Right. We have to talk about the labor movement for sure. Right. It's not just a book about a fucking meatpacking plant. It's a book about the labor rights movement. Right. It's about fucking anarchists. It's socialists and communists. It's, it's about capitalists uh, and industrialists. It's about robber barons. Right. Like this is this is everything is contextualized against the backdrop of the society and the time that it occurs. And to understand that, you're going to have to talk about the politics of the time. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. Oh, God, now I'm hearing it. GL, GL, fuck you. Fuck you, Open GL. I'm hearing it now. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, that fucking, oh, that evil fucking song. Oh. It's Friday, Friday. God, that fucking song. You know that fucking, do you, have you ever seen the Cracked video about that shit? Super fucking dark. Hold on, let's get the fucking Cracked video about that shit. That, that. We're, we're doing this. Dude, back when, back when fucking Cracked made good fucking, good content. Yeah, exactly for twos. I know. Well, what am I thinking? Um, where the fuck are you people? There you go. Chat. Um. So long, suckers, is what I'll soon be saying, but not on camera, because I just figured out the perfect way to escape this life of internet drudgery, lest I be counted among the thousands laid low before their time by meme lung. See, all I have to do is write a single super stupid song which will aggregate and accrue instantaneously many millions. Uh, money millions. Money millions, incidentally, also the title of the song. Works on a lot of levels. How to write a pop internet anti-hit. By now, we're all familiar with how Rebecca Black turned a monotone list of her daily activities and state-of-the-art bus stop sign CG technology Nice rev. Technology into internet fame. Gotta get down to the bus stop. Gotta catch my bus. I see my I didn't say play it. We're all familiar. The point is, I'm monotone. <laughs> I do things routinely. How come I don't have 71 million views and crippling cyberbully problems? There must be some other secret to success hidden in videos like Friday. Computer, scan ironically successful pop videos. Have any of you ever seen this video? Cause this is this is some dark shit, dude. This is this is some dark shit. Like the fact that Michael Swaim and Cracked Video fucking put noticed this shit is kind of fucked. Yeah, this is some dark shit. I was on YouTube for similarities. Okay, either the computer's done analyzing or my soup is ready. Computer? No, not that. The other thing. Why I oughta? So, mostly women scoring the big numbers, but that's okay. I got a conversion kit around here somewhere. <laughs> Plus, I'm only eight in robot years, because robots go by mental age, and I watch YouTube for a living. What else? Still chilling in the front side, in the front side, in the back seat. Back seat. Now I do it all, all. Do it from all. the comfort of my phone. Oh, wait, Corey. Aha! Uh -huh. 
they all sport sick, dope, toit rap breakdowns, which is noise because I already do that. You gotta rhyme in rapping almost all the time. See? Literally just as good. Anyway, all you really need is the artistic suggestion of a rap breakdown. Case in point. Yeah, man, Bieber is dead. Long live, wait a minute, was that all the same guy? Computer, identify that guy. Who the fuck is I this do guy? That sound indicates a 100% match. Well done, computer. <sighs> I'm just clippy. <laughs> Nevertheless, it looks like all of these YouTube anti-hits were written and produced by the same guy, Latrice Wilson, AKA Pato, which I believe is slang for most of a potato. <laughs> He's head of Pato Music World and Arc Music Factory, so-called because it's a clear sign that God has forsaken us and we're all about to be killed in a righteous cleansing flood. This also explains why Alison Gold's debut video, Shush Up, named after what you start shouting at the screen 10 seconds in, includes the line, Any last words? Gold is the new black. As in Rebecca Black, not Orange is the new black. Even though she's in prison and playing a blonde that hey, you Maddie. kind of instinctively hate. I know, confusing. <laughs> and none of it explains why Patrice thought it was a good idea to make Allison's music video about a child getting the electric chair, then lethal injection, then committing suicide by raining down onto a bunch of party people as a shower of gold. All because he told her to burn. Maybe you can burn. I swear, there's no more context than that. If you look closely in the video, you can actually see Allison's mother realize just how much she's ruining her daughter's life. And that's not even mentioning the backup dancers in this thing. These women came to Hollywood with dreams of stardom. Now they're sexualizing a little girl in prison and I'm positive none of them know why. They auditioned to do this. Look at this guy. He worked out so much. And for what? To hit a tire with a sledgehammer in the alley where we shot anti-heroes. That guy is acting out a metaphor for his life right now. God, I hope they shot there after us. And the high creep factor present in Shush Up is no anomaly. Patrice Wilson is also the mind behind a music video where the kids all get hooked on crack rock and one where he plays Mr. Rogers convincing a tiny doll-sized girl to get in his rape van and go to a party where he spikes her drink with a love potion, turns himself into a puppet, then turns her friend into Chinese food and she eats her. Very specific fetish, Patrice. Hell, if these songs were ever compiled onto a CD, it'd be called Now. That's when I call Child Protective Services. Plus, this is what I was okay. This is what I was talking about. I'm like, do you guys know the fucking dark ass shit behind this Friday crap? The producer's creepy as fuck, and definitely like keep him on a watch list. That's all I'm saying. Is keep him on a watch list. Ah. Uh. It turns out Pato charges the stars of these videos for the privilege of being in them. All right, I'm not sure I really want to make my many money millions this way. I mean, this guy is either A, callously <laughs> taking money from Civic, up yeah. stage parents by promising to make their kids internet famous, or B, a legitimate pedophile directing sexualized videos of preteen girls and no one is stopping him. How is it legal for a grown man to form a duo called Tween Chronic whose music video looks like Pee-wee auditions for the Jack Nicholson role in The Departed. Allison Stacy, we out. <laughs> ah, Jesus, nice laugh, kid. Uh, you may notice that's also Allison Gold. Stacy was never seen again, hopefully because she ran away from her shitty parents and started living with literally anyone else and not because she succumbed to a crippling pixie stick overdose. In fact, <clears throat> the only one asking Patrice Wilson the hard questions is himself, in the form of an interview with a dead-eyed woman he clearly paid to ask him questions that he wrote. Who are you? What is Arc Music Factory? What's in the future for Arc Music Factory? Could you elaborate for us where you stand on these comments and posts that say what you're doing is wrong and that you're exploiting kids? Whoa, I take it back. Surprisingly incisive, dead-eyed woman. What say you in your defense, eh? 
Pacto. The whole goal is to bring people together. I cannot get this out of my head. That's the whole goal. You guys watch on television and TV. It's actually less auto-tune we use. We have to go ahead and create that auto-tune. We don't charge our artists. If we are to charge an artist, it could range from 2,000 to 4,000. Is that a bad deal? And you even get lunch. Jesus, man, you wrote this interview. How can you be so unprepared? You did you catch that shit? It's fucking brilliant. This is, he did this, he did this himself. This is his own fucking interview. Create that auto tune. We don't charge our artists. If we are to charge an artist, it could range from 2,000 to 4,000. We don't charge our artists. Well, if we charge our artists, it costs two, between two and 4,000. Not a bad deal. And you even get lunch. Jesus, man, you wrote this interview. How can you be so unprepared? You really articulately laid out all the valid concerns that people have <laughs> about what you're doing, then answered with a bunch of jumbled lies and con- Matic, Nigeria originally, apparently. Contradictions, as if you didn't set this up yourself. Ugh, makes me so mad I got a sketch about it. People online say you're great. How do you respond? Well, the dead hookers are under the floorboards. Oh shoot, that's not what I meant to say. And I spiked camera and I didn't restate the question and the answer. <laughs> Can we take that back? Sure, whenever you're- I think we found the Nigerian prince. Oh, open. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you're ready. Well, when people on TV, online, television tell me that I'm great, I always under the floorboards, dead hookers, six of them, six dead hookers. I am just a mumble mouth today. Can we edit that all out? No. <laughs> Weirdly, no. Really. Even though this is just a PR thing and I set it up myself and we're both me. I know, it's strange. Also kind of a lot to expect from the audience that they'd understand that this one time we're the same person when usually you just change shirts and they're expected to believe that you're a whole different guy. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it's quite So do you- I'm sorry. Oh, well, I- Were you gonna- I thought- Okay, if you just- Well, it's like we they- We can fix this in you, post. It's please. not- I let's don't think- agree How is this even let's possible? Let's just start- <laughs> If it's oh, edited, no. please- I miss it, OG cracked. F Patrice Wilson. Parents, please stop lending him your children. It disgusts me. So let's stop Pato the only way we can, by simply ignoring him. Which I guess is kind of hypocritical of me to say after I just did a whole video featuring his work. And I watched each of those videos like a dozen times to write the episode, so I guess you win. Wilson! Fucking OG cracked. Dude, they did good work. They did good work. Um, yeah. So, like, a couple of you knew about Patrice Wilson, but, like, a bunch of you did not know about this, and that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's the sketchy-ass motherfucking pedophile, like, like... Probably a fucking pedophile uh, behind that Friday song. Yeah, some sketchy ass shit going on behind the scenes for that shit. Um, <laughs> oh, hey now. Now you know. Anyway, let's see. All right. Oh, why am I getting tagged? Oh, yeah, Zippy. No, I know Steve Hughes. Um, Dave Chappelle used to be funny. He used to be funny. Uh, but he used, it usually it needs Neil Brennan to as a writing partner. When Dave works out without Neil, um, shit just doesn't land. It's a shame, too. Um... Last time I saw a shady motherfucker with fucked up sunglasses, no car insurance with R. Kelly when he couldn't find a bathroom at Red Lobster. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, keep an eye on that motherfucker. Oh, yeah, Matic, for sure. For sure. Um, thank you for the follow, Reverse Uncle Ruckus. Uh, I had to think about that, actually. Um... <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Open GL. There's no fucking way I'm clicking that link. There's no fucking way I'm clicking that link. You're a full-on white trader. Cool. 
uh, on this on the scale. Eh, fair enough. I've been called a race trader pl plenty of times, so it's okay. I, I I earned my stripes for for being a race trader, so I'm okay with it. Um. I got self-hating Jew for opposing neo-Nazis from another Jew's cupcake. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's fucking Rebecca Black Saturday. Yeah. Open GL. Yeah, it's, it's fucking Saturday. I know what it is. Uh, ain't no fucking way. Ain't no fucking way. It's bad enough we just went down the Friday hole. We ain't fucking touching that shit. Um... All right. <laughs> Good on you, Karina. Yeah, I, I've I've been called race trader a bunch of times. Whatever. Uh, I got anti Latino for dating a black chick in public. Plot twist: she was Brazilian and Asian. <laughs> Well, cat, have you considered? <laughs> uh, sure, Glazy, you gonna get on the air? Glazy's coming on the air, everyone. Everybody, Glazy, what you what, what you what you want to debate, Glazy? Um, oof, interesting, Walada. Uh, oh, um, well, we don't, we don't fucking know yet. I haven't been able to weasel my way into that dude's life. I've been trying though. Um. How many dead hookers does it take to change a light bulb? Apparently more than four. My basement is still dark as fuck. <laughs> Solid night loader. Solid. All right, Glazy, I look forward to seeing you in voice chat. I, I, you know, this should be interesting. Um... Oh, crazy. You're adorable. You're adorable. Ugh. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds about right, Kaiser. Oh. Is that what they call a dark joke? I like it a lot. Yeah, no, that's that's a dark joke. That's that's assuredly a dark joke, but yes, the the pun there is appreciated as well. Even though I don't like puns. Um, all right. I really kind of want to get through some more of this document. I know it's a Friday. God damn! How many sections does four have? Technically six sections. Um. Okay. But but Friday. Yeah, I know. Uh, um <clears throat> It's Friday. Friday. Open GL everyone. That's who you have to blame. It's all Open GL's fault. Yeah, we knew that. Cat like, we knew that.
Blame Pato. Blame Pato. What well, a lot of it is. Um, dated a black woman in supposed uh, uh, in in the supposed most progressive city in Arkansas. I caught a hell of a lot of ugly looks. Not like uh, that time we went to McDonald's with my pasty daughter and her two older mixed siblings, though. Mm. Um, hilarious! The movie the other. Falcon was doing is about a sheriff. Uh, the, the other ball um, doing get killed by mistake. Well, all well, those past history of violence. My car, uh, daughter, pig, uh, daughter a pig, and all the fancy. Other, yeah, yeah. Baldwin's. I mean, he's not good people, but you know, accidentally killing stuff somebody is a fucking rough moment. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's you know not exactly great for the person who's being accidentally killed, but you know, living with that shit is. Not a great time. Oh, I'm receiving a silenced call because it's from a fucking number I don't recognize. This should be interesting. One of my fucking neighbors, my one of my fucking neighbors just fucking left me a voicemail. I said, I just want to let you know there's a bunch of fucking teenagers going from house to house. It's a bunch of fucking teenagers. I tried to chase them, but they, uh, they, they, they I, I, I couldn't catch them. Hold on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go look if like a courtyard has been like invaded by teenagers or something. Like whether the cul-de-sac has been invaded by teenagers. This is fucking hilarious. I love my nosy fucking old neighbors. Yeah, so, like, no. No, there's literally, it's 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 a quiet cul-de-sac. <laughs> it's fucking, fucking nosy-ass bitch. <laughs> just, just keep him posted. Keep you, be sure to listen, be, be on the lookout. Keep me posted. Yeah, will do. Will do. I mean... These are one side cam. They're side cam. No, no, Karina. This is like actual neighbor, not like. No, these are these are my actual neighbors. Nope, Coda. Um, I haven't been able to weasel my way into their house. I haven't been able to weasel my way into their house. I've been, I, I, I tried. I, I tried a couple of times. Um, Arkansas? Mm, whatever. Um, <laughs> God darn, gosh dang, teenager calling a ruckus in our quiet neighborhood. Honey, take your meds. You're hallucinating again. Actually, 
see, here's the thing. You assumed it was a male. It's 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 a woman, first off. Um, there's a woman who called. There's a female neighbor. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, she's 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 the one on the cul-de-sac, basically. Um, uh, somebody somebody up above that said he. Um, some she's she's the one of the cul-de-sac who like. She's that one. <sighs> All right. Um, yeah, whether you guys like it or not, I'm going to try and get through the, the 4.0 section. <laughs> I know it's Friday. Um... Okay, that's that's a take. Uh, I mean, how many timeouts for Glazy is that, by the way? Uh, you know what? Glazy, you're getting timed out for being chicken, apparently. Um, It's not the weekend. It's still the week, Charlotte. Um, It's still the week, and class is not over yet. I'm not sending you home for the weekend with, with homework, but we are going to use this class session to its fun. <laughs> uh, too real. Yeah, fucking too real, right? Channel and that shit. Even I, dude, I'm, I'm years out from it. And even I remember that shit. Like, still traumatized. But, um, the bell that you should fuck it. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I do. <laughs> uh, Friday, Friday. Fucking open GL did that shit to us. Fucking A open. Alright. It means I have to disable like everything. I just I, I've got like a checklist now of shit I gotta go through. Um just to get this fucking reading done. Uh, yeah, just go to my dashboard, please. Thank you. Alright. Disabled. I wonder when we're going to get rid of enabled and disabled on things in technology because somebody starts crying that it's ableist. Just, just wondering when that people, people tried to get rid of master slave in technology and the fucking like architecture and infrastructure admins were like, yeah, yeah. Do you have any idea how embedded master and slave relationship verbiage is in technology and engineering and fucking <laughs> it. good luck. We ain't going in and digging that shit out. Just deal with it, bitches. Uh, <laughs> you see how you put that in the ether? I'd give it 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, well, good luck. Uh, glad to be of service. Now we wait. <laughs> All right, let's let's fucking see this cursed ass fucking shit. Fucking cat has put in. Fucking nerd. Um. Oh. Oh god, you're actually engaging with them. Good luck, Psycom. Good luck, Psycom. Um, all right. So we're on what chapter four here. Oh. 
I, hey, Psycom, if you're deriving pleasure and entertainment from it, far be it from me to take away your play toy. But if you get tired of your play toy, you know what to do. Um, <clears throat> oh, cat. All right. How long is this? How long is 4.1? Oof. 4.2. Mm, 4.3. All right. All right. So we're just going to do, we're going to do a minimum of one section here. We're going to do a minimum of one section, but I want to, I want to get this. I dude, there's like how many chapters is this fucking document? There's 11 chapters with like subsections and shit like that. Right. Like I, I, I want to get this done so I can say it's done and then just point people to it when they want an argument for this shit. So I want it in the, I want it in the fucking can as they used to once say, um, Chapter four, what is the right libertarian position on private property? Right libertarians are not interested in eliminating capitalist private property and thus the authority, oppression, and exploitation which, go which goes with it. It is true that they call for an end to the state, but this is not because they're concerned about workers being exploited or oppressed, but because they don't want the state to impede capitalists' freedom to exploit and oppress workers even more than is the case now. They make an idol, uh, idol of private property and claim to defend absolute unrestricted property rights, i.e. that property owners can do anything they like with their property as long as it does not damage the property of others. In particular, taxation and theft are among the greatest evils possible as they involve coercion against justly held property. They agree with John Adams that the moment that idea is admitted into society that property is not as sacred as the laws of God and that there is not a force of law and public justice to protect it, anarchy and tyranny commence. Property must be sacred or liberty cannot exist. But in their celebration of property as the source of liberty, they ignore the fact that private property is a source of tyranny in itself. Note that anarchists only object to private property here, not individual possession, nor usage rights. However, as much as anarchists may disagree about other matters, they are united in condemning private property. Thus, Proudhon argued that property was theft and despotism, while Stirner indicated the religious and status nature of private property and its, and its impact on individual liberty. He even wrote as such, quote, Property in the civic sense means sacred property, such that I must respect your property, be it ever so little, if one only has somewhat of his own to wit a respected property. The more such owners, the more free people and good patriots has the state. Political liberalism, like everything religious, counts on respect humaneness, the virtues of love. For in practice, people respect nothing, and every day the small possessions are bought up again, uh, again by greater proprietors, and the free people change into day laborers. Page 248 of the Ego in its own. Thus, so-called anarcho-capitalists reject totally one of the common and so defining features of all anarchist traditions, the, opposi uh, the opposition to capitalist property. From individualist anarchists like Tucker to communist anarchists like Bookchin, anarchists have been opposed to what Godwin termed accumulated property. This was because it was in direct contradiction to property in the form of the produce of his, the worker's own industry, and so it allows one man to dispose of the produce of another man's industry. The Anarchist Reader, page 129 to 131. Thus, for anarchists, capitalist property is a source of exploitation and domination, not freedom. It undermines the freedom associated with possession by creating relations of domination between owner and employee. 
Hardly surprising then that the fact that, according to Murray Bookchin, Murray Rothbard, quote, attacked me, Bookchin, as an anarchist with vigor because, as he put it, I'm opposed to private property. The Raven, number 29, page 343 for that interview. We will discuss Rothbard's homesteading justification of property in the next section. However, we will note here one aspect of right libertarian defense of unrestricted property rights, namely that it generates evil side effects such as hierarchy and starvation. As a famine expert, Armatya Sen notes, quote, Take a theory of entitlements based on a set of rights of ownership, transfer, and rectification. In this system, a set of holdings of different people are judged to be just or unjust by looking at past history and not by checking the consequences of that set of holdings. But what if the consequences are recognizably terrible? Referring to some empirical findings in a work on famines, evidence is presented to indicate that in a large many famines in recent past in which millions of people have died, there was no overall decline in food availability at all, and that the famines occurred precisely because of shifts in entitlement resulting from exercises of rights that were perfectly legitimate. Can famines occur within a system of rights of the kind morally defended in various ethical theories, including, including Nozix? I believe the answer is straightforwardly yes, since for many people, the only resource that they legitimately possess, their labor power, may well turn out to be unsaleable in the market, giving the person no command over food. If results such as starvations and famines were to occur, would the distribution of holdings still be morally accept acceptable despite their disastrous consequences? There's something deeply implausible in the, affirm in the affirmative answer. Resources, Values, and Development, pages 311 to 312. Thus, unrestricted property rights can have seriously bad consequences, and so the existence of justly held property need not imply a just or free society. Far from it. The inequalities property can generate can have, a serious, uh, can have serious impact on individual freedom. See more of this in Chapter 3, Section 1. Indeed, Murray Rothbard argued that the state was evil not because it restricted individual freedom, but because the resources it's cl it claimed to own were not justly acquired. Thus, right libertarian theory judges property not on its impact on current freedom, but by looking at its past history. This has the interesting side effect of allowing its supporters to look at capitalist and status hierarchies, acknowledge their similar negative effects on the liberty of those subjected to them, but argue that one is legitimate and the other is simply not because of their history. If this changed the domination and unfreedom that both inflict on people living today, see section, uh, chapter 2, section 3 for further discussions, and section, uh, section eight, uh, chapter 2, section 8, and chapter 4, section 2 for other examples of justly acquired property producing terrible consequences, the defense of capitalist property does not have one interesting side effect, uh, does have one interesting side effect, namely, the need arises to defend inequality in the authoritarian relationship inequality creates. In order to protect the private property needed by capitalists in order to continue exploiting the working class, these so-called anarcho-capitalists propose private security forces rather than state security forces, such as police and military, a proposal that is equivalent to bringing back the state under another name. Due to capitalist private property, wage labor would still exist under their so-called anarcho-capitalism. It is capitalism, after all. This means that defensive force, a state, is required to defend exploitation, oppression, hierarchy, and authority from those who suffer them. Inequality makes a mockery of free agreement and consent. Chapter 3, Section 1. As Peter Kropokin uh, pointed out long ago, quote, when a workman sells his labor to an employer, it is a mockery to call that a free contract. Modern economists may call it free, but the father of political economy, Adam Smith, was never guilty of such a mis misrepresentation. As long as three quarters of humanity are compelled to enter into agreements of that description, force is, of course, necessary, both to enforce the supposed agreements and to maintain such a state of things. Force, and a good deal of force, is necessary to prevent the laborers from taking possession of what they consider unjustly appropriated by the few. 
The Spencerian party, proto-right libertarians, perfectly well understand that. And while they advocate no force for changing the existing conditions, they advocate still more force than is now used for maintaining them. As to anarchy, it is obviously as incompatible with plutocracy as any kind, any other kind of ocracy. Anarchism and anarchist communism, pages 52 and 53. Because of this need to defend privilege and power, so-called anarcho-capitalism is the best is best called private state capitalism. This will be discussed more in, in chapter six. By advocating private property, right libertarians contradict many of their other claims. For example, they say that they can support the right of individuals to travel where they like. They make this claim because they assume that the only uh, that only the state limits free travel. But this is a false assumption. Owners must agree to let you on their land or property. Quote, people only have the right to move to those properties and lands where the owners desire to rent or sell to them. This is Rothbard in The Ethics of Liberty, page 119. There is no freedom of travel onto private property, including private roads, which there will be many of under this system. Therefore, immigration may be just as hard under these so-called anarcho-capitalist systems as it is under statism. After all, the state, like the property owner, only lets people in whom it wants to let in. People will still have to get another property owner to agree to let them in before they can travel. Exactly as now. And of course, they'll also have to get the owners of the road to let them in as well. Private property can be seen from this simple example. Is the, small writ, uh, is the state writ small? One last point. This ignoring of politically incorrect, economic, and other views of dead political thinkers and activists while claiming them as libertarians seems to be commonplace in the right libertarian circles. For example, Aristotle, beloved by Ayn Rand, thought that, quote, only living things could bear fruit. Money is not a living thing, was by its nature barren, and any attempt to make it bear fruits, tokos in Greek, the same word used for interest, was a crime against nature. Such opposition to interest hardly fits well within uh, well into capitalism, and so either goes unmentioned or gets classed as an error. Although we could ask why Aristotle is an error while Rand is not. Similarly, individualist anarchist opposition to capitalist property and rent and interest and profit is ignored or dismissed as bad economics without realizing that these ideas played a key role in their politics and ensuring that an anarchy would not see, uh, would not see freedom corrupted by inequality. To ignore such an important concept in a person's ideas is to distort the remaining into something it just is not. Hey, 11 minutes and 11 seconds on, on chapter four intro. Um, do I want to try and do 4.1? I would, I would stop there at 4.1 if I do it. If that's what you took away from that glazy, then holy shit, man. I fucking, uh, objective line. Thank you for the follow, by the way. If you're still here, I know theory reading usually ditches people really quickly. So, ah, oh, the Poconos. It's been decades since I was in the Poconos. Oh, Zippy. Turnabout is fair play. Zippy, you're getting timed out. Um, the only thing I have to say on that topic, Lime, is that the only way you're ever going to get there is through anarchism. So if you do want socialism, if you do want communism, then you better embrace anarchism because the fact of the matter is, is by using... <laughs> I'm going to heal you by beating you with my magic stick, right? Like that's not how things work. Um, so if you want to actually dissolve the state and create a classless society, then you need to dissolve the state and create a classless society. And that's what anarchism does. Um, yeah. 
centralizing authoritarian communism will never lead to actual communism. It's just an impossibility. That's just it. China and Russia has taught us that. The, the experiment's been run multiple times at this point. Uh, glazy, I am neither. I'm an anarchist. So by definition, some would place me in the socialist camp, um, but I would resist that because I'm a pragmatist and I know that's probably not going to happen in my lifetime. I would argue for syndicalism over either of those just because a redemocratization of the workplace and a re-empowerment of the, union, uh, the trade union within our system could reorder the hierarchies of our system and that is an achievable goal. I am a pragmatist first and foremost. I want to see progress actually achieved. So I think arguing for things like socialism or communism, while it, while it can be an interesting mental exercise, I think is counterproductive in many spaces. So there you go. It rev in a, in in a real way in a very real way it kind of is but it also isn't. Um, it depends whose school you're in, basically. So, it really isn't worth arguing over with somebody. It just it's just not it's not worth arguing. Um. Oh, for two. Yeah, no, it's, 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 that's, um, that's, that's always been the critique. That's always been the critique of fucking ANCAPs is you're just recreating the state. That's all you're doing. Like, well, I mean, we need private defense forces and insurance companies and contract systems and, and well, you know, arbitration companies to maintain the, uh, you know, to, to settle the disagreements within those sorts of things. You've recreated the military, the police force, and the judicial system of the state in your singular sentence setup. Yeah, super fucking anarchist, bruh. Super fucking anarchist. You literally in one breath managed to recreate the state. You just privatized it. That's all. Like super fucking. Yeah, wow, bro. Um, hey, skeptic. Uh, alerts aren't turned on right now. But thank you for the sub. Six fucking months. Look at that. Um, yeah, skeptic. Lurk if you want to lurk. It's fucking, it's a doofy fucking, like, it's, it's doofy, but yeah, we're, we're spending hours. The state is already privatized. America isn't, isn't anarchy. <laughs> oh, that fucking doofy motherfucker too. Apparently he was sending one of his idiots in here to try and bait me. I don't know what the fuck that was about, but I just wouldn't take it. Like, I was just like, no. America. Um, uh, Glazy, thank you for the sub. He's obsessed. Yeah, because I'm recognized as an actual anarchist and I refuse to acknowledge him. Like, it's not even like fucking Scott, right? Where I'm like, you are not an anarchist. Cuckoo is just, just a non-entity. He's just, I refuse to acknowledge him. He's not, it's, he's not a fucking anarchist. He's a cult. He's a wannabe cult leader. Right? Like, he's just, like, that's not, like, there's, there's, there's actual fucking, like, content behind debunking a fucking so-called ANCAP, right? Like, that dude's just a cult leader. <laughs> like, he's a wannabe cult leader. That's all. Like, I got, bruh, go fucking smoke your spirit science shit and fuck off. I don't care. Like, I don't care. Like that's that's you know it's it's fucking sad man yeah you're right it's fucking sad he's still talking um i got intel information he's going to debate someone in this community G good luck to him 
Fucking Jesus Christ. I would, dude, I, but he's all he's going to do. We've had him on the air before. It's sad. It's sad. Anyway, that's enough time spent on cult leaders. <laughs> or wannabe cult leaders. And not even an actual cult leader. You just don't want to be cult leader. Um, <laughs> check it. Also, check out my site. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He fucking, dude. Cult leader. Um, Fertuse. Um, lack of logic and common sense. I don't know. Fucking a willingness. Since both are bullshit artists, both are willing to talk to each other. Yeah. Oh, the jab. It's the it's the COVID vaccine. Is that the fucking bridge? The bridge is the COVID vaccine. That's hilarious. Of course. Of course. They're both fucking anti-vaxxers, basically, at the end of the day. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm just anti-COVID vaccine. Mm -hmm. I, Rev, I heard him say the name of his website over 100 times, and it never once stuck in my head. It's because it's a shitty web, It's a shitty domain name, right? Mine is, mine is kaisthings.com, right? Like that's, it's like, hey, where do I find all, all, of, Kai, uh, all of Kai's things? Right? That's simple. It's fucking simple, man. Keep it simple when it comes to domain names. Uh, hire me as a joke writer. Imagine this unheard of philosophy of Jew writing you jokes. Um. Uh, yeah, but he says anarchy wants it. We never forget. No. Yeah. Like it's fucking brilliant. I, I, it's adorable. All right. Bring back pneumatic injectors. Uh, all right. That's hilarious. It's the fucking COVID vaccine. That's the link between them. Of course it is. Of course it is. Um, God, this is kind of long. All right, fuck it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, and this will be the last one, and I promise. It's the last, last fucking section of the week. I promise. Interesting. A uh, caboose. Oh, thank you, Caboose. I don't think you... Yeah, it's your first time gifting a sub. Um, fucking thank you, Caboose, but also congratulations, Lennon. You're now an anarchist because that's how it works. Um, yeah, well, it's it's probably not going to happen, Glazy. The, the capitalism won't happen. Um... All right, let's do this. Uh. And that's because it's not Marx lime. Marxian critiques of capitalism are accurate. I will never take that away from him. It's his solutions that are dog shit. Marxian, Marxian critiques of capitalism are accurate. There's, there's no way around that. There, and I wouldn't want to go around that. Like, right? Marxian critiques of capitalism are, are prescient. They're, they're accurate. But Marx was a centralizing authoritarian communist at the end of the day. His solution is best elucidated by his arguments and debate with Bakunin at the First International, right? Like this is this is the difference of opinion. The difference of opinion at the end of the day not is is not in the problem, it's in the solution. Right? Both anarchists and communists alike sit there and go, "Holy shit, does capitalism have some problems?" Right? But 
an, at anarchists go, you know those problems are being supported by the state as well. And you can see how that happens. Russia went capitalist as well. Fucking China went capitalist as well. Welcome to Dengism, right? Like, th- communism can't fight against it because it has the state implement it. The mechanism of action for capitalism is the state. So if you have that, you're going to have a method of action for the capitalist to take over again. And you can see that with Pepsi and Gorbachev or fucking McDonald's and Deng, right? Like, take your fucking pick. Either way, it's at the end of the day, the, the results are going to be the same. You can't, you can't, you can't state your way out of a state. So, at the end of the day, you need to talk to the anarchists. No, you're not, Zippy. Um, all right. Not not fundamentally, no, Lime. There's 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 schools and camps. Here's what you have to understand about anarchists. It's a network of ideas, not a monolith, and we much prefer it that way. Um there are schools of anarchism that would probably be opposed, but there are more schools that would be okay with it because the scope and scale issue the issue is with representation, not delegation. Right. And there's a de- political science as far as there's a concern, there's a distinction to be made between those two topics or those two concepts. Right. Representatives are representing you. Right. Delegates are there empowered by you, but you can undo at a moment's notice. Right. Your, your delegate is basically your bitch. Those representatives are a symbolic stand in for you within a systemic model. And so the problem, the differentiation in the problem is important within political science spaces such as this that's prescriptive, right? Whereas we would use a delegative delegative system rather than a representative system. And so fundamentally, there's nothing necessarily wrong with the idea. It's just how you construct it and how you operate it that anarchists would then come in and say, look, it has to operate along a certain line. Otherwise, we're out. Corey, it's happened all the time. Um, all sorts of people. And it, this is a uh, fucking... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, Red Boy of Goo. That is a name. That's a name. That's a name. Um, who wiped your ass when you were a fucking child, right? Was somebody compensating your, your mother or your father for that? Right? Who took out the trash? Uh, all over the place, Lime. Um, 50% of agriculture and industry during the Spanish Civil War is being produced by uh, anarchist uh, anarchist communes. Um, the anarchist Republic of Caspia lasted for 375 years long in the fucking U.S. function, and they did it in the face of the papal states. Depends how you define succeeded, too, by the way. Let's, let's fucking, let's set those goalposts correctly as well. Where has communism succeeded? Where has socialism succeeded? Right? Like, how are we defining success? First, I should probably ask the question. Norway. Oof. Are you sure you want to go with Norway? I mean, I'll give you a chance to change your answer, but (laughs) we talk about exploiting the third world socialism, Norway, Um, except Norway is not socialist, Glazy. That's the problem. (laughs) <laughs> that's the problem is is that Norway is not socialist. 
I, I don't disagree that no, uh, Norway has like high levels of productivity and high levels of index of happiness, that sort of thing. Um, but please explain to me how Norway has social ownership of the means of production. Explain to me how socialism is having a monarchy. It, 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 Norway isn't socialist. They're not. They've socialized a bunch of programs. But they're not socialist. And there's a, an important distinction to be made there. No, they're not, Glazy. And watch this. Get roasted by Swede. Sock Dem is socialist. Hey, Swede. Is Sock Dem socialist? Or does it mean social Democrats? No, that's literally the definition of socialism. Objective. Like, it's literally the definition. Fuck everyone who says Sock Dem is socialist, says Swede. Deploying Swede. Oof. Get roasted by Swede. <laughs> socialism is when capitalism but light. Well, I mean, that was Lenin's definition of socialism. Leninism is essentially state-run capitalism. So... Yeah, it depends Depends fucking who you're talking about, I suppose. Tactical sweet inbound. <laughs> yeah, it means social democrat. Okay, or a social democracy. It doesn't mean socialist. As I already pointed out, there is a d vast chasm of difference between socializing and socialism. No, Glazy. No. The United States military is a social program. It is not socialism. The post office is a social program, not socialism. Socialism is when the government does stuff and the more socialist -er, the more that the government does. Karl Marx. <laughs> Great spelling, too. Um, it's calling Sock Dem socialist. Haven't seen a reach this good since Halo. <laughs> With the fucking... Nice, nice, nice weave there, Jack. Nice weave. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was... Norway. Norway socialist. Oh. All right, let me get to reading. Let me get this section knocked out. Let me get this section fucking knocked out. I slept wrong the other day. On top of everything else that's going on, I slept wrong. And it's just fucking... <clears throat> oh. God. Capitalist states approximating socialism to compete with socialist states are not socialist. <laughs> Says I like Lenin. <laughs> right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just, I just can't some days. I just can't some days. Uh, I love how social democrats and democratic socialists are two entirely different things that people keep getting confused. <laughs> Oh, God, it is brilliant, isn't it, Caboose? All right. Oh. <laughs> Socialism is just free health care. <laughs> oh, God, you guys are going to keep me distracted. All right. Chapter 4, Section 1. What is wrong with a homesteading theory of property? So how do so-called anarcho-capitalists justify property? 
looking at Murray Rothbard, we can find that he proposes a, quote, homesteading theory of property. In this theory, it is argued that property comes from occupancy and mixing labor with natural resources, which are assumed to be unowned. Thus, the world is transformed into private property for, quote, title to an unowned resource such as land comes properly only from the expenditure of labor to transform that resource into use. The Ethics of Liberty, page 63. Rothbard paints, paints a conceptual history of individuals and families forging a home in the wilderness by the sweat of their labor. It's tempting to rename his theory the Immaculate Conception of Property, as his conceptual theory is somewhat at odds with actual historical fact. Sadly for Murray Rothbard, his homesteading theory was refuted by Proudhon and What is Property in 1840 along with many other justifications of property alongside it. Proudhon rightly argues that if the liberty of man is sacred, it is equally sacred in all individuals. That is, if it needs property for its objective action, that is, for its life, the appropriation of material is equally necessary for all. Does it not follow that if one individual cannot prevent another from appropriating an amount of material equal to his own, no more can he, can, uh, he, can, preve uh, can he prevent individuals to come? And if all the available resources are appropriated and the owner draws boundaries, fences himself in, here then is a piece of land upon which henceforth no one has a right to step save the proprietor and his friends. Let this multiply, and soon the people will have nowhere to rest, no place to shelter, no grand ground to till. They will die at the proprietor's door, on the edge of that property which was their birthright. What is property? Pages 84, 85, and 118. As Rothbard himself noted in respect to the aftermath of slavery, see chapter 2, section 1, not having access to the means of life places one the, in the position of unjust dependency on those who do. Rothbard's theory fails because for, quote, we who belong to the proletariat class, property excommunicates us. Proudhon, again, what is property, page 105. And so the vast majority of the population, population's experience, uh, population experience property as theft and despotism rather than as a source of liberty and empowerment, which possession gives. Thus, Rothbard's account fails to take into account the Lockean proviso. And so, for all its intuitive appeal, ends up justifying capitalist and landlord domination. See the next section on why the Lockean proviso is important. It also seems strange that while correctly attacking social contract theories of the state as invalid because no past generation can bind later generations, he fails to see his doing exactly that with his support of private property. A property. Similarly, Ayn Rand argued that any alleged right of one man which necessitates the violation of the rights of another is not and cannot be a right. Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal, page 325. But obviously, appropriating land does violate the rights of others to walk, use, or appropriate that land. Due to his support for appropriation and inheritance, he's clearly ensuring that future generations are not born as free as the first settlers were. After all, they can't appropriate any land, it's taken. If future generations cannot be bound by past ones, this applies equally to resources and property rights, something anarchists have long realized. There is no defensible reason why those who first acquired property should control its use by future generations. However, if we take Rothbard's theory at face value, we can find numerous problems with it. If title to unowned, unowned resources comes via the expenditure of labor... How can rivers, lakes, and the oceans be appropriated? The banks of the rivers can be transformed, but can the river itself? How can you mix your labor with water? So-called anarcho-capitalists usually blame polluting on the fact that rivers, oceans, and so forth are unowned, but how can an individual transform water by their labor? Also, does fencing in land mean that you have mixed labor with it? If so, then transnational corporations can pay workers to just fence in vast tracts of virgin land, such as a rainforest, and so come to own it. Rothbard, uh, Rothbard argues that this is not the case. He expresses opposition to arbitrary claims. 
He notes that it isn't the case that, quote, the first discoverer could properly lay claim to a piece of land by laying out a boundary for the area. He thinks that their claim would still be no more than the boundary itself and not to any of the land within, for only the boundary will have been transformed and used by men. (laughs) However, if the boundary is private property and the owner refuses others' permission to cross it, then the enclosed land is inaccessible by others. If an enterprising right libertarian builds a fence around the only oasis in a desert and refuses permission to cross it to travelers unless they pay his price, which is everything they own, then the person has appropriated the oasis without transforming it by his labor. The travelers have the choice of paying the price or dying. And the Oasis owner is well within their rights of letting them die. Given Rothbard's comments, it is probable that he will claim that such a boundary is null and void as it allows arbitrary claims, although this position is not at all made clear by him. After all, the fence builder has transformed the boundary and unrestricted property rights in what right libertarian... uh, uh, um, After all, the fence builder has transformed the boundary and unrestricted property rights is what right libertarianism is all about. And of course, Rothbard ignores the fact of economic power. A transnational corporation can transform far more virgin resources in a day than a family could in a year. Transnationals mixing their labor with the land does not spring into mind reading Rothbard's account of property growth, but in the real world, that's what will happen. If we take the question of wilderness, a topic close to many eco-anarchists and deep ecologists' hearts, we run into similar problems. Rothbard states clearly that, quote, Libertarian theory must invalidate any claim to ownership of land that has never been transformed from its natural state. He presents an example of an owner who has left a piece of his legally owned land untouched. If another person appears who does transform the land, it becomes justly owned by another, and the original owner cannot stop them. And should the original owner use violence to prevent another settler from entering this never-used land and transforming it into use— they also become a, quote, criminal aggressor. Rothbard also stresses that he is not saying the land must continually be in use for, uh, for it to be valid property. Citation included th- page 30, uh, 63 and 64 of the Ethics of Liberty. After all, that would justify landless workers seizing the land from landowners during a depression and working for it themselves. So where does that leave wilderness? In response to ecologists who oppose the destruction of the rainforest, so-called anarcho-capitalists suggest that they put their money where their mouth is and buy the rainforest land. In this way, it's claimed that rainforest will then be protected. As ecologists desire the rainforest because it is wilderness, they're unlikely to transform it by human labor. It's precisely that that they want to stop. From Rothbard's arguments, it's fair to ask whether logging companies have a right to transform the virgin wilderness owned by ecologists. After all, it meets Rothbard's criteria. It is still wilderness. Perhaps it will be claimed that fencing off land transforms it, hardly what you imagine mixing labor with domain, but never mind. But that allows large companies and rich individuals then to hire workers to fence in vast tracts of land and to recreate the land monopoly by a libertarian route. But... As noted already above, fencing off land does not seem to imply that it becomes property in Rothbard's theory. And so, of course, fencing in areas of rainforest disrupts the local ecosystem. Animals cannot freely travel, for example, which is, again, what ecologists are trying to stop. Would Rothbard accept a piece of paper as transforming land? Doubtful. After all, in his example, the wilderness owner did legally own it. And so most ecologists will have a hard time in this so-called anarcho-capitalism. Wilderness is just not an option. As an aside, we should note that Rothbard fails to realize, and this comes from his worship of the market and his Austrian economics, is that people value many things which do not appear on the market. He claims that wilderness is a, valueless, uh, is a valueless, unused natural object. For it, 
if people, uh, uh, for it, people valued them, they would use them, i.e. appropriate them. But unused things may be of considerable value to people. Wilderness being a classic example. And if something cannot be transformed into private property, does that mean people do not value it? For example, people value community, stress-free working environments, meaningful work. If the market cannot provide these, does that mean that they do not value them? Of course not. See, Julia Shores, the overworked American, on how working people's desire for shorter working hours was not transformed into options on the market. More on this. Moreover, Rothbard's homesteading theory actually violates his support for unrestricted property rights. What if a property owner wants part of their land to remain wilderness? Their desires are violated by the homesteading theory. Unless, of course, fencing things off equals transforming them, which apparently it does or does not. We're sort of uncertain at this point. How can companies provide wilderness holidays to people if they have no right to stop settlers, including large companies, homesteading that wilderness? And of course, where does Rothbard's theory leave hunter-gatherers or nomadic societies? They use the resources of the wilderness, but they don't transform them. In this case, you can't easily tell if virgin land is empty or being used as a resource. If a troop of nomadic, uh, if a troop of nomadic humans finds its traditionally used but natural oasis appropriated by a homesteader, what are they to do in this system? If they ignore the homesteader's claims, he can call upon his defense firms to stop them. And then, in true Rothbardian fashion, the homesteader can refuse to supply water to them unless they hand over all of their possessions. See chapter four, uh, chapter four section two, the next section, on this. And if the history of the United States, which is obviously the model for Rothbard's th- uh, theory, is anything to go by, such people will become criminal aggressors and be removed from the picture. Which is, of course, another problem with Rothbard's account. It is completely ahistoric. And so, as already noted above, it's more like immaculate conception of property. He's transported capitalist man into the dawn of time and constructed a history of property based upon what he is trying to justify. Not surprisingly, as he does, with the, uh, as he does this with his natural law theory uh, too. See section 7, um, more on that. What is interesting to note though, is that the actual experience of life on the U.S. frontier, the historic example Rothbard wants to claim, was far from the individualistic framework he builds upon it. And ironically enough, it was destroyed by the development of capitalism. As Murray Bookchin noted, quote, The independence that the New England Yemenary enjoyed was itself a function of the cooperative social base from which it emerged to barter homegrown goods and objects, to share tools and implements, to engage in common labor during harvesting time in a system of mutual aid, indeed to help newcomers in barn raising, corn husking, log rolling, and the like, was in the indispensable cement that bound scattered farmsteads into a united community. Third Revolution, Volume 1, page 233. Bookchin quotes David P. Satsmary, author of a book on on the Shea Rebellion, stating that it was a society based upon, quote, cooperative, community-oriented interchanges and not a basically competitive society. Into this non-capitalist society came capitalist elements. Market forces and economic power soon resulted in the transformation of this society. Merchants asked for payment in specie, which along with taxes, soon resulted in indebtedness and the dispossession of the homesteaders from their land and goods. In response, Shea's Rebellion started, a rebellion which was an important factor in the centralization of state power in America to ensure that popular input and control over government were marginalized and that the wealthy and elite and their property rights were protected against the many. See Bookchin, again, The Third Revolution, for more details on this at length. Thus, the homestead system was undermined, essentially, by the need to pay for services, as demanded by merchants. So while Rothbard's theory has a certain appeal, reinforced by watching too many Westerns, imagine, it fails to justify the unrestricted property rights theory and the theory of freedom Rothbard derives from it. All it does 
is end up justifying capitalist and landlord domination, which is, well, probably what it was intended to do. All right. Um, you know, you guys know I fucking check out like, let's see, let me scroll up here. <laughs> yeah, I saw that Jack, I will become a fencer in Ancapistan and own the world. Like legitimately, if Ancapistan ever becomes a thing, we're all becoming fencers. That's that's it. We're all installing fences for a living. That's that's what we're doing. They've yet to they've yet to resolve this. They've re yet to resolve this conflict. What is what is fucking transformational usage? And if it is transformational usage and it is only restricted to the land that we are uh, uh, are working itself, what happens if we create boundary areas? Right? Like what, what happens if we just fucking like fence in the waterfront? Right? Sure, sure. You're free to use the river and you're free to use the land inside it. But um, we've fenced all that in and you can't access our fence. Oh, no, no. You're free to use it. You just can't use our fence. But I can't get to it without crossing your fence. Yes. Um, well, that, that does seem like an issue. Um, we admit that. Yes. Um, but you know, is what it is. <laughs> like, it's, it's a fucking stupid... Fuck. How is this your... How is this your fucking failing... Like, this is the linchpin in your entire ideology? Is a dude with a fence post? That's... that That's literally... Like, that's... Dude, that's the crux of your fucking argument right there? Like, that's what to fucking kneecapped you? Is a dude with a fucking f a fence post? Holy shit, man! That's come on. Um, are, am I a lord of the land? I am not. Um, I do technically uh, own private property though. Um, but it is not being used. And I gotta tell you, if I found somebody fucking like camped out or using it, I wouldn't give a shit. I own I own like um, a few things. Um, my lord, the cul-de-sac. No, I don't own this place. Um, but there is, there is like, um, own like, uh, 40 acres in Northern Nevada and shit like that. Right. Like, yeah, but it's completely unused. And if, if I went up there one time and to survey the property and I found that somebody had set up a homestead there and they were homesteading, I'd be like, good on you. The land wasn't being used and this is difficult land to live on. So I, I just want to get to know them. I'd be like, what's up? Like, you, you, you lucked out. You lucked out. Of all places that you chose to do this, you chose the fucking place that, like, a dude gets it. Like, yeah. It's cool. It's shit, beastical. It's absolute dog shit. Um, Lenin, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism and anybody who claims to a higher moral standard or ethical standard under this system fails to understand operating within this system. And besides, it's part of a family trust. Um, no, I don't actually, for twos. Going to need to learn to pole vault if Ancapistan is a thing? Yeah, basically. Basically. <laughs> Sweet. Yep, those who hate capitalism are usually pretty good at it. a lot of fence posts doesn't sound more stupid than flag painting that got some families far right oh there's no ancap grind the philosopher no i can't i can't i can't fucking for, i can't click it i can't click it for two so i can't i can't do it Um, 
Um, I can't do it, man. I know I promised, but I want to do section four. I want to do section two. Oh, I, I promised though. I promised I wouldn't do another fucking like anti ANCAP theory. But like you guys got like you, like you guys are starting to understand why these fuckers drive me insane, right? Right? Going through this, they're batshit insane, right? Like why? Why? Why do I need to argue against somebody who's a fucking ANCAP? They're idiots. They're fucking idiots, right? Like legitimately, they're they're idiots. I I I can't I can't with this shit. Right? They're anti empiricism. They're anti fucking scientific method. They're anti common sense. They're fucking anti fucking human. They fucking uh, literally support slavery. Right? Like, at what point do I like need to actually have a philosophical conversation with these people and be like, look, w- w- what? They support slavery, y'all. They support slavery, like child slavery. Like their ideology, we covered this. Their ideology literally allows for somebody to set up a private mill in which women are impregnated and the children are then sold on the market. Their ideology allows for that, right? Like that's, that's an inbuilt feature. I'm going to have a fucking debate with that. Sure. It just shocks me how many aren't bad faith. They genuinely believe in this garbage, which is hilarious because most of the fucking founders of this ideology are all operating in bad faith. Uh, Viva. Thank you for the daddy Bezos buck. Sorry. Alerts aren't on because we were just finished doing some reading. Um, but thank you for the resub Viva on uh, nine fucking months and daddy Bezos bucks too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ruth Kenna. Right. Government to no one, theory and practice of anarchism by Ruth Kenna. It's a good starting place. It's a, it's an excellent starting place for people. Um <laughs> Mad and Kapistan is Mad Max, but morally but more morally reprehensible somehow. Um Oh wait, did somebody fucking I love that you fucking shut someone down, Gloss. Um You really don't understand, you really don't see who would rake asphalt in 100 degree weather because you don't understand how somebody would do that without coercion. You really don't get that? Wow. You really, like, you really are, like, hyper-individualist. You've been brainwashed by, by, by like, Murica or some shit like that, right? You don't understand how somebody could do something for the good of a community, for the good of a group, without a coercive element making them do it. Huh. That's a shame. Like that's 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 I'm sorry for you. Like I'm literally I'm sorry for you. Yeah. That's I'm I'm sorry you've never experienced like a, an actual like family or community. That's sad. Yeah, you sacrifice for for your community. You sacrifice for family. You sacrifice for the good of the group. That's it's it's a fundamental human trait. That's I mean that's super depressing that you don't get that. Lime. Are you Lime Vermonter by birth? Fucking I'm not a lowlander Vermonter. I, I'm not a lowlander, uh, objective lime. I was fucking born there. It's my fucking home state. Vermont for life, baby. Best state in the union. Um, fuck yeah. Uh, objective lime. I do plumbing for free for random people. Vermont is sick. I fucking, dude, Vermont for life. Best fucking state. Best fucking state. Um, uh, respect, man, if you're there. And if you're, if you, if you were born there, even more respect. You're not one of those fucking lowlander imports. 
Um, <laughs> die hard, man. The accent's gone, but the Vermonter is always in me. Okay. Oh, whatever. Uh, well, we got more anarchists in Vermont than communists, or at least the last time I checked. Look, shit changes, demographics change, but Vermont's got a lot of anarchists up in those hills. But, you know, hey, as long as you don't fucking cross them, you'll be fine. Um, fucking respect. Um, I won't ask you to dox yourself, but, like, north or south? Where, where are we hanging? We hanging, we hanging close to the fucking leafer assholes? Are we up by the, by the, uh, by the fucking Quebecois? Um... What do I think of Minnesota? Uh, we might be moving there eventually. Hey, fucking cats mo- planning on moving to Minnesota. Okay. All right, objective. Right on. Uh, cats are planning on moving to Minnesota. I, I, I Look, I, I had a buddy from Minnesota for years and years and years that moved back there. Um, he had a rough time with the math out here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's fucking, it's solid. But Minnesotans, fucking Minnesotans got that fucking Canadian thing, don't they? Um... So, yeah, Quebecois, you rang. <laughs> I like the I like despite everybody else. I love the Quebecois. They're fucking batshit insane, but I love them. Um, yeah, they got they got a solid accent. Yeah, I dig it. Um, but yeah, Vermonter for life, baby. I I fucking yeah. The fact I I man. I legitimately, like, I'm not memeing here. I'm not like trying to, like, I'm not punching down. I'm not fucking with you. I'm not trying to dodge the question. This is, this is something that like the fact that you can't see that, right? That you, you legitimately don't understand how that could be a thing is a little scary. It's a little frightening. Um, yeah, it's a little freaky that you, you, you can't comprehend that, how that can work. Um, but honestly, you're far from the first person I've, you're, 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 you're a norm. You're a norm in like Western individualist society, right? Like that's, that's normative value, but we built amazing stuff completely on the backs of, yeah, no, I'm just doing it. What do you think this, all of the software running like this shit, right? The, the internet is built on the top of open source technologies, Right? Like, what do you think open source technologies are? They're a complex, multi ethnic, large scale society d- working on a communal project for the good of the community and without any expectation or coercive uh, expectation of profit motive or coercive element attached. Right? Like, what do you think that shit is? It's literally the definition of that. We do this all the time. It's just, it's terrifying that, like, people can't see it. It, It's, that's, this isn't about you anymore, Red Goo. Like, this is one of my critiques of humanity, and it really bothers me, is people lack vision. People lack vision, and that freaks me the fuck out. Right? Like, I, I, I can see it why can't you right like it's not that complicated it's right there it's right there at the horizon it's it's sitting it's sitting right there all you have to do is reach out and grab it it's it's literally the it's the difference between it's just changing your mind right like it's not complicated and yet it's the most complicated thing in the world apparently but it really isn't um If we were just looking at the consumer market, Windows is the winner. But if we talk about anything else, Nix, open source Nix, Unix, Linux, BDS, BSD, um, fucking the community developed open source OSs have kicked everyone's asses. Yeah, they have. They're the winners. Like they run everything, right? This stuff developed in a communist fashion. No one owns it. Fucking the license holders give freely. 
right? Like it's done without coercive aspects. It's done without profit incentive, free BDSM. Yeah, right. I almost did it, right? Like all of this sort of stuff, these open license technologies, right? They, they run the internet. They run our modern world. And they were done without any profit incentive and any coercive element whatsoever. Capitalist realism, vision, hope, and creativity is beaten out of most people at a young age. I guess so. And I res Vermont, fucking Vermont. This is this, I'm telling you, Vermont. Fucking Vermont. You grow up in Vermont, you grow up different. You grow up in Vermont, you grow up different. I'm telling you. It, I, it's one of those fucking places. It's an enclave, y'all. It's an enclave. It, it, it's got some, it's got some issues. I'm not saying it's a fucking utopia, but it, it, they do some shit, right? They do some shit, right? And it, it, it fucking, it forms a, a method of thought. And if you're there for the formative years, you come out of it and you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't get this shit. Um, I mean, Bernie, we adopted him. Bernie, Bernie's not a Vermonter, but he is now. He's one of the few true adoptees. Like they didn't like him for decades, by the way. Vermonters hated Bernie for many years. Like the, the general milieu, the fucking LGBT crowd loved him. The fucking, you know, the fucking lefties loved him, but the general Vermont milieu hated Bernie for a lot of the time. Um, but they love him now by and large. Yeah, I, <laughs> boss, um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I literally just read a section about how entire communities were built and uh, like how the U S was literally built on the back of communal action, right? And that the, the, the capitalist incentive, the coercive incentive was an invading aspect. It's an invading cultural aspect, right? The, the, the foundational technology that built up a whole bunch of this fucking thing that we call America was a communalist technology. Like, how, how are we even... Like, I, I just, sometimes it makes me wonder. Astray, I'm surprised people haven't learned from the pandemic that we enjoy working. Staying home all day is boring, so the work isn't the problem. It's the whole underpaid, undervalued workplace abuse that was the problem. I, 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 you know, y'all, I don't understand how it's so complicated some days. I don't understand how it's so complicated some days. This is, this is, this is something objective lime. Like, look, you're, you're a fucking commie and we'll handle that like at a later date, but you're a brother in arms and you don't seem like you're too centralizing authoritarian about it and you're hanging out in Vermont. So they'll, they'll beat that out of you anyway. Um, this is something fucking objective Lyme gets to see on a regular basis. Now Vermont's about this shit, dude, farmers markets and, uh, and town halls. Have you been to a town hall yet? Lyme, you been to a fucking good old fashioned Vermont town hall. Oh, that's dude. I miss that shit. Dude, fucking town hall meetings. People don't understand. That shit's for real. It's it's a real deal in Vermont. They still get shit done via town hall meetings. Like, it, it's not like you see on CNN, oh, it's a town hall meeting with, like, Joe Biden. No, like, shit actually gets done. It's, oh, my God. It's amazing. I think people don't realize how many labor jobs won't exist without capitalism, creating them meaning more time off to do creative, productive things. Sweet. No, yeah, there's so much fucking busy work. Is so much fucking busy work. Um, 
Rev just dropping pro- p- dropping pines from around a friend's property all week because he needs them gone. Another friend needs to replace his deck. Voila. Shit gets done. Farmer's market every Wednesday. I'm not, but familiar with the process. Lime, you're going to fucking... Dude, either you're going to love it or hate it, but I got to tell you, I missed the fuck out of it, and I was a little kid for it. I missed the fuck out of that shit. That shit's, that shit's the real deal, right? Like, we got an issue on the table. Everybody come down to the town hall meeting, and let's fucking talk about it and decide. That shit's the real deal. It's impressive, and that's still alive. That's still a part of the fabric of the culture of Vermont. It's, it's sincerely impressive to, to, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor to be able to participate in it. It it is. Take it seriously when you do it. Um, unfortunately the right wingers will never believe that unemployment gone jobs still uh, have trouble finding people to work there. Sometimes even at 15 plus an hour, they think it's just because people don't want to work. Not that people went and found better jobs or that 64,000 females that left the market because they couldn't get childcare or any number of reasons. Yeah. GL it's fucking, um, Lime, they are socially conservative people. Vermonters are socially conservative people, but you'll find your people. Like I said, there's a lot of anarchists up in the hills, right? Like it's that your people aren't necessarily going to be the most vocal at some of those meetings. But if you if you couch your terminology correctly, if you talk about the, the just leave. Don't mention communism. Don't fucking mention communism. Don't fucking mention anarchism. Don't fucking mention any of that shit. Right? Like, you know the deal. Right? Like, you, at least I hope you know the deal. Right? Like, drop that shit. Drop the aesthetic. Drop the verbiage. Just get rid of all that shit. Understand the core concepts and go forward with those. You'd be surprised how many people align with them. There's so many fucking people that align with them in Vermont. Like, in society, there's like, oh yeah, there's a lot of people. In Vermont, it's every other fucking person that aligns with those ideals. You just can't call it communism or anarchism. I know the deal satellite. Yeah, exactly. You just got to get rid of that shit, bro. Right? Like you just can't be talking about that shit, but they will feel you. They'll feel you. Um, you know, you're a newcomer and you're a lowlander. Understand that lime. I hate to be the bearer of bad news uh, and anybody who's been around long enough knows exactly what I mean by that. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You will never truly be a Vermonter. It's like that. You will forever be a lowlander. You'll, you'll just, you will always be an outsider. So you have to earn your place. You have to earn your place. You have to be, you have to earn that respect. They're very serious about that sort of thing. It's the small town vibe. You are an outsider. Understand that. And eventually they'll welcome you as one of your own. Um, but it takes time. It takes time. And especially as a Californian, especially as a Californian. Um, yep. Narrator. You don't have to say your uncle. Just let your position speak for themselves. Um, Jesus, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, they get the job done. Um, hustle culture is a capitalist scam. It is Charlotte. How do I sniff these people out? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're like Vermonters are like our honorary Canadians and Canadians are like honorary Vermonters. We're sort of the same group to a huge extent. Um, Did you just convince me to volunteer for the shop to uh, to shop trick or treating? You're cool people, buddy. I I like to I like to try lime. I like to try, and I, I legitimately a good portion of that is because I'm I'm Vermonter by birth. I'm not kidding you. It 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 it, it that state does shit to people, and it does the right shit. Look, they got some racists. All right, they got some racists. It's a white ethno state. <laughs> there's fucking dude. There's very few people of color in Vermont. It's gotten better since I grew up there. But holy shit, there's a lot of white people. <laughs> there's a lot of fucking white people. Um, 
Even Canadian cities are not very Vermonty though. They're they're more Philly vibes, they have small town vibes. Have the Vermontish vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rural, rural knows rural. Rural knows rural. Um. And yeah, maple syrup ro- flows through my veins. I grew up on maple syrup. Um. Uh. Lime. Have you had the opportunity to do the maple syrup in snow on a stick shit yet? Because if you haven't, you need to do that. It's 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 a rite of passage. It's a rite of passage. Hey, Adia. White, white, white. Yes. Very white. Like, white, white. Mainers are a funky bunch, too. Oh, if you're from fucking uh, the North Woods, Maine, GL, fucking North Woods folk are fucking ben-a-den-den-den-den-den of, like, New England. They're sketchy. Uh, especially, yep, so, especially as you start getting farther north and the towns stop having names and just strings of numbers. Yes. Yeah, the North Woods folk in Maine are fucking dude. That shit gets real. My man's knows maple syrup and stuff. Of course I do. I fuck it. Dude, my credentials as a New Englander are solid, solid. I was born and raised, right? Like I I've been all over this country. I've lost the accent. I, you know, I've I've even gained a little bit of a southern twang from time to time from my time in Tennessee. But the fact of the matter is, is that maple syrup flows through my fucking veins. I am a Vermonter for, by birth, and I hope to be a Vermonter by death. I want to, I want to be born there. I want to be buried there. Ah, uh, oh Jesus, cat. Yeah, you're too much of a lightweight for that shit. Lime, take the invitation. Fucking, you have to take that invitation. It's a rite of fucking passage. You have to take that invitation. Yes, it is one of the great fucking things. You basically, here. so here's what y'all know. You, you take a fresh snowfall, like Vermont or like Maine or, or like rural Canada, pure as pure can be driven, right? You take fresh snowfall, you put it on a fucking table. You like bring it inside, bring it in a fucking bucket, bring it on a shovel. You put it on the fucking table. You put a like a strip of snow. You literally put a, a mound of snow and you fucking take like a spoon back and you just fucking dip, 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 dip. And you put a whole line of indentations. And then you take like the end of a spoon or like a stick or a toothpick, but uh, tongue depressors work best. You put that in there and then you drizzle um, fucking maple syrup that your buddy down the road fucking did in his sugar shack from his uh, from his maple taps. And you put that in those fucking hollows and that solidifies and takes some of the snow with it. And you fucking it's it, everybody in Vermont grows up eating this, right? This is, this is, yeah, my man even calls them tongue depressors. Yep. No, like this is my credentials are in order. My man, trust me, they're in order. This is, it's fucking honestly, right? Like, you know, like near tier territory, like the halcyon days of yore. What do I think of bringing a flask of, flask of whiskey to the bar? If you're in like a bar in like a rural town, that's fine. If you're in a bar in like Las Vegas, no outside liquor, my man. No outside liquor. But if you're in like a rural and you know the bar owner and shit like that and he doesn't carry the brand or whatever, and you just, you always carry a flask. Yeah, nobody will give a shit. Um... And what up, Jelly Bear? Um, <laughs> um, we're witnessing Vermont adulthood rite of passage. It's actually a child. It's a childhood rite of passage. Every kid goes to a sugar shack as a school field trip. Every kid fucking ends up going and doing the fu- uh, the 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 snow maple syrup shit. Like it. it um. Like feeding troughs, which you, oh Jesus Christ, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a whole other ball game. Um, should I just see my face? What I've just discovered there a place where you can have your own flask of liquor. Yeah, for sure. Small town, dude, cat. Small town life is better. It's better. It's got its challenges. It definitely has its challenges. Right, uh, small town life has has probably more challenges than like big city living. 
but its quality of life has a shot at being better. I think like the opportunity at a better quality of life is better in rurality, whereas like the the the, the faculties of living, right? Like food and job and all of that bo- bullshit is easier to achieve in the city, right? And it's sad because I got to tell you, quality of life is better in rurality. It just is like not having people all up on your jock all the time, being able to fucking piss in the woods when you want to. Like, it's just, it's just a better time. Oh. <laughs> Beastical. Um, if we actually made our cities livable, that'd be different. I mean, I will forever be a country boy, so I'm, I've got a bias on this one, Caboose, but they'd be better. Yeah, they'd be better. They could, they could be a lot better. They could be a lot better. Um, it depends. Cassiopeia, it depends. Here's, here's a story from a Vermonter, right? Vermont had one of its first openly trans uh, officials, and they did not have an issue with, uh, with her. They drove out the the black official though. The the death threats for the black the person of color. There's a black a black woman who's an official in Vermont. She got constant death threats and shit, and she just ended up quitting. She's like, I'm out. The openly trans person who was white. Remember, I said there's a bit of a race issue in Vermont. That's their issue. It's it's a white ethno state. It's a fucking white ethno state. But the trans person openly served, and they they were perfectly fine with her. So as, as a non-passing trans person, you'd be surprised. But if you're a person of color, I don't have a solution for you because they're still a bit racist. Uh, yeah. Uh, small town life is waking up at 6 a.m. to go put the kerosene lamp underneath your car frame to heat the pipes enough so you can turn it over, then driving an hour or two in the middle of butt fuck nowhere to even... Uh, in order to even grab breakfast before working negative 25. Small town life, bros gay. Um, I mean, I can, dude, see that narrator. I'm fine with that, dude. If you want to take it, I mean, Bookchin was a problem towards the end of his life. But as far as the, all the social ecology stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, I'm, I'm on board with it, man. Fucking, I love supply lines. I love supply lines. But I, cities are killing my soul. Cities are killing my soul. Um. First state to accept gay marriage, from what I'm saying, correct? Yep. Vermont don't give a shit. Vermont has the opinion. Vermonters have a New Englander's attitude. And a New Englander's attitude is, don't piss on my leg and I won't piss on yours. Right? What you do on your property is your fucking business. Mind your own fucking business. Mind your own fucking business. Right? Like, that's, that's, it's that sort of mentality. The, the only, the only time you should look at your neighbor's plate is to see if they have enough food to eat, right? It's like that. It's, it's that mentality. It's, it's, it's just fucking ingrained in the culture and society of New England to a huge extent. And especially in Vermont, mind your own fucking business. Are you like, oh, well that person is trans and they're, they're married to a guy or what? It's like, are they bothering you? Well, I mean, it's an affront to God. No, no, no. No, they bothering you. They on your property? No? Then shut the fuck up about it. I don't want to hear about it. Right? It's it's very much that attitude. It's 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 a breath of fresh air for a lot of people when they experience it. It's like, holy shit. Dude, they'll talk shit about you behind your back. They may not like it. They may not approve of it. They may not accept you truly. But as far as somebody fucking with you? Mm-mm. Mind your own fucking business. Yeah, it, it's like that. I, I, it, I'm truly thankful for having experienced it. Um, why would anybody be racist? Because they're fucking, it, people are products of their environment. That's it. People are products of their environment. I can't shake the image of gay Bill Burr whenever you do that, and I don't like it. Um, Night Loader, you're a Parisian though, so fucking y'all are a different breed entirely. 
Winiski had uh, the. F- it, you, it's W I N O O S K I. Uh, fucking lime. <laughs> I'm going to fix your spelling of Winooski. Uh, fucking the names in that part of the world. But that's a name I haven't heard in a minute. Uh, Winooski has problems with race recently. Vermont's got problems with race because they don't have any fucking people of color. Right? The only way you defeat racism is by exposure. Right? This is, this is, this is the thing. Go meet a, go talk to a black person, go talk to a gay person, right? Like that's how it works. All the fucking racist and transphobes and like homophobes and shit like that. And then all of a sudden they have a gay or trans kid and they're like, all of a sudden they have that enlightening moment. Yeah. It's because you fucking know one now, right? You're like, oh shit, I love them and they're that, but it doesn't matter. So why should it matter for somebody else? And oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Fucking galaxy brain moment. Right? Like, exposure is the only thing that cures that shit. And there's, like, four fucking black dudes in Vermont. It's fucking... It's like that, right? Like, it's it's fucking... It's a, it's a fucking enclave of fucking... It's a white ethno state. They got issues with race. They got issues with race. But, like, it, you'd be surprised how progressive they are if you fucking sit them down. You just gotta, you gotta give them that moment because they're fucking, their granddad was racist. Their fucking grandma was racist. Their fucking dad, their pe- their peepaw, their fucking pops, their fucking ma, their fucking, everybody they've ever known was like subtly, systemically racist. They're not even overt about it sometimes. They're just fucking douchebags about it. They just don't, you're like, yeah, you know, they're fucking, yeah, it's fucking Chicago and fucking Detroit and fucking like Compton shit and they're fucking all that thug music and shit like that, right? We don't, uh, it's, it's shit like that. And so they just create an oppressive environment that isn't welcoming. And so, you know, cold plus unwelcoming racist white people equals not a whole lot of black folk moving in. Right? Like that, that shit ain't fucking rural folk with shotguns who are uh, already racist plus a shit ton of snow equals not a whole lot of black folk. So they don't get the exposure. So there's a bootstrapping issue. And so you're just left with like white enclaves of douchebaggery, but that are like super progressive in other ways. It's, this is, like I said, they didn't have an issue with the trans person. They had an issue with the black woman. This, this tracks for Vermont, actually. Like, it made perfect sense when I read that. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Because they know trans people. There's trans people in Vermont. There's gay people in Vermont. The LGBT scene has been going fucking strong in Burlington since the fucking 80s and before then when a fucking Bernie led the fucking, you know, the pride parade back in the 80s. Right? Like, they're not, they're not, they've been exposed to gay people. They've been exposed to trans people. They're, they're, you know, they're coming around on a lot of that shit even further, but there's still not a whole lot of people of color in Vermont. So you need the exposure and they ain't getting it. So, um, for two said, that's funny because my mother's exactly like that. Endlessly, endlessly disturbed by the evil Muslims, but unfazed by trans folk who bought HRT in her pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, dude, that's fucking, yeah, Bookchin got pretty bad towards the end. Yeah, he did. Those ML Roots narrator came out pretty hard in Bookchin towards the end. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, Reno, Reno, for sure. Um, <laughs> started Twitch war against pa- the patriarchy and drink whiskey. Um, let's see. What's up from Singapore? Alex, never mind. Sorry I didn't see you when you first came in, but I'm seeing you now. What's up? Singapore. Fucking, you, you distant. You're distant. Um, how are things going in that part of the world? Y'all okay? You got any concerns you want to talk about? Um, integration is based, actually. Yep. Um, Dirty Daddy Pig 420. Preach. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's all the galaxy brain stuff. Let's see. Um, Charlotte. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, 
Kai's actually moderating himself a tiny bit, not to sound like a freak to city people, but if you're in a small town like uh, him and uh, he and I was, uh, and someone was on your property, you'd bear arms. Ain't no matter if you're drunk or the big and shit, you grab the 30 out six and 12 gauge, you'd be bonk that fucker. Maybe you fire a warning shot in the sky first if you were nice. Um, we weren't that bad in Vermont. Fucking man, we it's real. We weren't that fucking bad. Um, shit does happen though. Shit does happen. Right? Like, don't don't fuck around on people's property, man. <laughs> don't fuck around on people's property. <laughs> Shit gets real, real up in rural areas. Shit gets real. Look, ain't no cops coming. Ain't no state police coming. Ain't no sheriff coming. Ain't fucking city cops here. There's no metro cops here. Fucking, you got to look out for, for your own. Shit gets real. Right? Like, you don't know what their people are doing on your property, why they're there, what they're coming for. So, yeah, you sort of, you meet them at the gate with a fucking shotgun in tow, right? Like, you don't point it at them. You just fucking carry it. You meet them at the, you meet them at the gate carrying a shotgun, basically. And you're like, what's up? Why are you on my property? What's going on? Do y'all need directions? Yeah, are you lost is a pretty common way to start the conversation. Y'all lost? Need directions? Subtle way of saying that you shouldn't be here. Where are you trying to be? Right? Um, so, like, yeah. Like, that's, that's, shit gets real up in the rural areas. Like, you gotta protect yourself. And so, you know, like, we, we, my property in Vermont, like, the, the property that I grew up on, People legitimately, like leafers, if y'all aren't familiar, y'all should know leafers just from Family Guy, right? Y'all should know leafers from Family Guy alone. Um, but leafers are basically Vermont's Vermont's autumn. The, the autumnal season in Vermont is, there's no equivalent. It's, 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 I mean... Here's Vermont in the autumn, right? Like, this is the kind of shit I, I grew up looking out over, right? This, this, is, this is Vermont in the fall, okay? This is, this is what our state looks like in the fall, right? It's, it, is, it is truly one of the most beautiful places on the face of the planet. It, there, there's, there's just, there's, they're really... It's, it's, it's a thing. Autumn in Vermont is a thing. And leafers come from the surrounding states to see. And like New Yorkers and lowlanders, as Vermonters would call them, right? Like, it is, it's a thing. And I've talked about it before. We own a mountain. <laughs> um, we 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 had we had a mountain, right? Like that's we did. The gate was at the base, and you up right, and people would come on our property because at the bottom was a pond and a river. And despite the gate, especially because of the gate, I think, because it was gated like a like a not like a like a steel pipe fucking gate, like a triangular steel pipe gate that fucking swung across. Right. People used to think that our property was some sort of state park. And that it was just, you know, they'd they'd have that moment of, oh, if we can get past the gate, like, let's just let's park here where there's clearly like a sort of an area. So our driveway went down, driveway, fucking ro dirt road, fucking driveway. And then there was a sort of widening and an opening by the the, the, the the county road. And they'd park on those sort of side areas that was inbuilt on the property. And they'd hop the gate or walk around the fucking gate and there'd be a fucking river, a fucking stream, a pond, a bench, right? It looks like a fucking park that's just been closed. And they think they're, you know, getting one up and they're like, yeah, you know, a fucking, yeah, sure. It's closed and whatever, but they, you know, like we're, we're, let's take some photos and sit by the, the, by the, the, the pond and have a sandwich and have our picnic lunch. You're on somebody's fucking property right now. 
<laughs> right? And fucking, you know, anybody from the region would know you don't do that, but leafers are, you know, tourist mentality. And so my father and mother were constantly fucking, you know, they'd, they'd be doing like chores around the property or something like that. And I'd be in tow and it's like, hey, we got more fucking leafers. Hang on. And, you know, you pull up and you're like, this is private property, you know, shit like that. And it's like, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. You can stay, you know, fucking just, just know that you shouldn't really be walking on people's property around these parts, right? We were usually really cool about it. We understood that like, you know, hey, this is, yeah, let them, let them enjoy it. Um, but like, you know, it can get you shot around these parts. <laughs> like fair warning, you might want to not do this everywhere you go because while we're chill about it, like, Shit gets real sometimes around these parts. You don't want to do this everywhere. You could end up shot and buried on somebody's property. Fuck around and find out. So, yeah, you always kind of gave them the, the warning. New street sign FRS still to test remote Vermont route and road. Not exactly fall, but it's based. Let's see. What do we got? Yeah, skip. Uh, I would, I you know, <clears throat> Kat, every Vermonter would hate him for that. We'd hear that and we'd be, we'd, we'd fucking like, who is making that ungodly racket? Just screeching around corners like that. We would, we would despise that dude. Be like, whoever that is. Who gave them permission to do this? <laughs> like, we would despise that. Uh, some of the most loosely held gun laws in Vermont. In Vermont, you can automatic, you automatically get concealed carry if you, can, uh, if you can purchase a gun. Straight up. Vermont does not do the CCW shit. Like, can you legally own a gun? Yeah, then why shouldn't you be able to conceal it? They don't differentiate between that sort of thing. Uh, does Vermont have castle doctrine? Not explicitly. Um, it doesn't do that. But the, yeah, that's the lime. Like they don't do stand your ground or castle doctrine, but the courts reliably say you have no duty to retreat. So let's see. I'm a snake. You want your own snake video? Snake. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, there's three, the three S's, shoot, shovel, and shut up. <laughs> it's, dude, rural, rural, rural anywhere. It's just about rurality. It's, that's, it's not about Vermont. It's not about fucking Canada. It's not about Maine. It's not about Texas. It's, it's not about Australia. It's not about fucking Europe. It's about rurality. It's, it's about the urban rural divide and rural does not have the ability to call the cops. They do not have the want to call the cops either. Um, what did that dude say about my boy Bernie? Eh. Um, if you actually watch Trump's speeches, you'll find intelligence there. Yeah, I mean, somebody had to set up the teleprompter. Somebody had to set up the cabling and the camera and the sound system and the stage. I mean, there's engineering that goes into that process. So, of course, there's intelligence there. Oh, you mean Trump? No. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> Trump is not a Freemason. Um, tall man. He is not Masonic. Um, yeah. Trump ain't a Freemason. And if you're wondering, like, why I would even declaratively... My grandfather was a 33rd degree Mason. My father is a Mason. My uncle is a Mason. I am not. But yeah, uh, Trump, Trump, Trump is not a Mason. Um, I still remember vividly what my dad was like. He was super old fashioned farm boy dad from the 60s. Like I did those people ain't get a, ain't even give a fuck for uh, gun safes either. No, no, God, no. What the fuck is a gun safe? Who the fuck keeps their gun in a gun safe? 
right? Like it's that mentality, right? Like guns are guns. You gotta, you gotta be able to use your fucking gun, right? They'll either lay their 30 out six right next to their wood frame bed, make a cup of hot cocoa with marshmallows. Yeah. Like that's dude. Gun safes aren't a fucking thing. Gun safes are like bougie, pretentious shit. You got a fucking gun closet. Maybe. Right, like you got a closet for your fucking guns, and you teach you you you, pre, you teach your fucking kids not to fuck with the guns, but right, like, dude, that's you got to be able to just grab it and go. You don't know if it's a bear, if it's a fucking mountain lion, if it's a fucking dummy from down country, uh, down uh, one of these lowlanders, and think they can just walk into your house. Yeah, the gun safe is for your collectibles, right? It, it, fuck, you don't put your guns in the gun safe. Um, gun room, they have their own bed. I mean, they kind of do, cat. Why keep it in a safe? What if the fly is annoying you? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, jelly belly. Anarchists are pro-gun. Um, yeah. You don't have to be a Republican to be pro-gun. Marx was pro-gun, by the way. Marx, any attempt to uh, surrender uh, firearms or ammunition should be frustrated by force if necessary. Karl Marx, you go far enough left, you get your fucking guns back. That's how it works. It's it's all you fucking centrist assholes out there that fucking are all anti-gun. <laughs> yeah, Reagan was anti-gun. Reagan was anti-gun. Well, Reagan Reagan was anti-black people owning guns. Reagan wasn't anti-gun. Reagan was anti-black people owning guns. <laughs> That's what Reagan was. He was he was fine with those good firearm laws as long as the black folk couldn't use them. <laughs> uh. Yep. Yeah. No. It's it's straight up line. Like you go f- you go far enough left, you get you get you get your guns back. That's it. Marx was pro-gun. The anarchists are pro-gun. There's a Socialist Rifle Association, for fuck's sake, that is comprised a good portion of, uh, uh, with, which is comprised of a good portion of anarchists. Right? Like, there's a, there's a fucking Socialist Rifle Association, for fuck's sake, um, which are way more based than the fucking NRA ever could hope to be. Uh, the Black Panthers exposed the Republican hypocrisy real fast, and the NRA. Fucking NRA got on board with that shit, too. NRA signed off on those cal- restrictive California gun laws. Mm-hmm. All right, racist as shit. They always have been. Always have been. That's why you didn't hear a fucking peep out of them during that whole Philando Castile shit. Mm-hmm. Fucking Philando Castile. Fucking sitting there. Got duly licensed, legally owned. Fucking reaches for his license. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, he has a firearm. It's fucking, yeah, he told him he had a firearm. You dummies. Where's the fucking NRA on that one? Where's the Second Amendment Foundation on that one? Not a fucking peep. Because they're a bunch of racist assholes. National Racist Association. Guns for me, but not for the... Ni- yeah. Racist crickets. Yep. Fucking like just... Chirp, 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 chirp. Like... Oh, yeah. Who says USSR was racist as shit, too. Mm-hmm. China racist and shit, too. The whole but centralizing authoritarian communists, they got a fucking racist streak. Okay, go for it, Jelly Bear. Bring it. I look forward to it. Come on. Um... Arm the unhoused, arm the sex workers, arm the migrants. Narrator, the channel policy as far as firearm ownership goes, guns for everyone except cops. That's literally the channel policy. It's been that way for a while. When people ask about firearms ownership in this country, that's the answer. Everybody gets guns but the cops. I, shit may get worse, but I don't, the cops can't have guns. I don't, I don't care. They're, they're terrible with them. They've lost their privileges as far as I'm concerned. Everybody else has a right to have a firearm. The cops have lost their privilege. Everybody gets guns but cops. Do I think the cops hate me? The cops fucking fear me, dude. Cops fucking afraid of me. I've told this to I f- sorry for it. Sorry for y'all that have heard this story before. Dude, 
I got good old boy network shit in my family. Like the one time that a fucking cop tried to tried to actually arrest me and tow my vehicle because he read the fucking driving history incorrectly, I called my stepdad, who just called the police captain, and the police captain called the cop, uh, the fucking uh, highway patrol officer's cell phone, personal cell phone, and said, "What the fuck are you doing trying to do uh, trying to arrest a, ki- uh, a fucking judge's son? Let him go, dummy." Yeah, came back, handed me my license, fucking uh, waved the fucking tow truck driver away and apologized. All right, cop in fucking high school, fucking school resource officer, fucking tried to, yeah, you better fucking believe I know, because this system's corrupt as shit. Fucking use any leverage you got, bro. Use any leverage you got. This shit, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. There is no escape coercive and oppressive elements of this system. If you got the leverage, use it. Right? Like fucking school resource officer in high school, right? Calls me in. Everybody knows I'm into IT. I've been in IT my entire life. Age four, right? We've talked about this. 14, I'm doing custom programming. Everybody knows I'm in fucking IT. Fucking school resource officer calls me into his fucking office, looks at me across his desk with his dumbass fucking face and asks me, are you on the good side of computers or the bad side of computers? All right, to this day, I, I, I what the fuck does that even mean, bruh? What the fuck does that even mean? Straight up, looked at me with a straight face and asked me, am I, am I on the good side of computers or the bad side of computers? Like, am I pissing them off? I don't know. I don't think the AI is completely sentient yet, but if it is, I'm on its side, not yours. Team AI, right? I fucking go home, end of the day, and fucking, I'm, um, yeah, I'm literally wearing a black hat right now, right? Um, yeah, I want to know if I was programming Satan. Hey, it's six foot. Um, are you the hacker known as 4chan? Right, right. It's fucking, so this dumb, this dumb fuck, I fucking go home. I'm at the end of the day, I'm talking to like, you know, I'm fucking hanging with my family at dinner table and how was your day? And I fucking tell them like, well, this happened. And my fucking stepdad's like, I'm sorry, what? A police officer at your school called you in for an interview or an interrogation in his office without talking to your parents or allowing you representation. All right. He called the chief of police. The chief of police talked to the mayor. The mayor talked to the principal. The next day, the chief of police the mayor, the principal of the school, and my stepfather and mother had a meeting in the school resource officer's office. He was literally afraid to look at me the rest of my high school career. I know this because I used to fuck with him. I'd open doors for him and wait for him to come. I'd be like, here you go, officer. His name? Right? Like, I'd literally fuck with him, and he would not even look at me. So, do I think cops hate me? No. They're afraid of me. So, there you go. Right? Fuck that guy. That guy was a dummy beyond belief. Fuck him. You voted out resource officers there? Good on you. Good on you. Yeah, fuck them. Now, am I afraid of them? You better goddamn believe it. Because while they're trying to, like, take my car or fuck with me in that way, that's one thing. One itchy trigger finger dummy motherfucker who thinks he sees a fucking weapon puts, a, uh, puts two in my chest. Right? Am I afraid of them? You better fucking believe it. They're fucking idiots with guns. And the state will cover their ass when they pull the trigger. So, yeah. Right? Like, that that fear goes both ways. You better fucking believe it. (laughs) 
I don't think I've ever heard a more computer illiterate question than are you on the good side or bad side of computers? I, Caboose, to this day, it resonates in my head. It resonates in my fucking head. Oh, 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 you want to do this, random? You want to do this? You really want to do this? Because I've written an article on this one before. Oh, this is great. This is fucking great. Police officer fatalities or how to control a populace using lies and force. Let's fucking do this. This is great. Oh, it's been a while since I've had to do this. Despite the propaganda, you know what? <clears throat> Hang on. Let's do this properly. Police officer fatalities are how to control a populace using lies and force. Despite the propaganda used to excuse their violence. Hang on. Let me actually, let me restart this. I'm going to, I'm going to do this a couple of different ways. I'm going to stop this recording and then I'm going to move this over here. So I'm looking at you guys. There we go. Now let me restart it. Police officer fatalities or how to control a populace using lies and force. Despite the propaganda used to excuse their violence that you've likely been inundated with since birth, the job of a police officer in America, even when taking into account the gun problem, is not even close to being dangerous. Even according to the most generous group compiling statistics on the matter, police involved uh, violence, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, as of December 27, 2019, only 128 federal, state, and pol uh, local police officers died in the line of duty. But hold on there, Sparky. We're not done yet. 43 of those 128 were traffic-related fatalities where the officer was outside their patrol vehicle and struck by another vehicle while engaging in activity on the roadside. Not intentional homicide, but vehicular accident. So... After some basic arithmetic, that leaves us with 85 officer fatalities in, 200, uh, in 2019. But wait, but wait, there's more. Next, we need to subtract the 19 officers who died from job-related illnesses, leaving 66 officers, uh, officer fatalities in 2019. Now, if you, thought you, if you thought we were done, think again. Take those remaining 66 and subtract the 12 that died from 9-11 attack-related illnesses, and you end up with 54 police officer deaths. But wait, don't forget the one officer who died due to fire while on duty and the one who died while on vacation in Hawaii and you're down to 52 officer fatalities in 2019. 52. Now we can talk about, viol about the violence aggression-based fatalities police face while on duty. That would work out to be 49 from firearm-related deaths, 2 from beatings, and 1 from strangulation. 52 deaths. Let's use the very loose total police presence in America provided by the exact same group. Remember, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. If anyone was going to be generous about these statistics, it would be them. Let's use the very loose total police presence in America of, quote, over 900,000 and just round it down to an even 900,000. That works out to roughly 0.0058% of the current police officers employed were violently killed in 2019. You know who has a more dangerous job? Just about everyone. Seriously. Here's some interesting job statistics for other professions. Granted, some of these numbers are for 2018 to 2019 as the numbers provided by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics at the point of writing this essay had not yet, had yet been released for the numbers of jobs-related injuries and fatalities in 2019, but they don't waver very much from year to year, so you can safely extrapolate from the 2018 numbers. These numbers were compiled by Advisor Smith and Insurance and Analysis Group. Loggers. Injuries per 100,000, 109.3. Fishers, 74.2 per 100,000. Sailors and oilers, 55.1. Pilots and flight engineers, 50.4. Paving and surface operators, 46.7. Dredging and excavating, 42.4. Derrick rotary drill and service unit operators, 40.1. Uh, 40 Other transportation workers, 39.2. Roofers, 39. Maintenance workers, machinery workers, 37.4. Woodworkers, 35.9. Septic tank surfacers, 34.3. Refuse and recyclable collectors, 31.9. Iron steel workers, 28. Drive, truck drivers and drivers in general, 26. Farmers and ranchers, 25.6 per 100,000. Rail track layers and maintainers, 25.4. Reinforcing iron and rebar workers, 25. Riggers, 24.4. First line supervisors of farming, fishing, and, uh, fishing and forestry workers, 23.1. You'll 
notice right away that police officers aren't making an appearance on this list is they're not in the top 20 most dangerous professions in America, though they'd have you believe otherwise. The truth of the matter is, is that police do not face much violence or danger at all in their jobs. It's through blatant lies such as this that they've invaded our local communities and terrorized our people with literal military-grade equipment that they gained access to via the 1033 federal program. Now we have poorly trained, link on article, poorly educated, link on article, low IQ, link on article, scared out of their mind, link on article, terrorists, link on article, roaming our streets armed with AR-15s, AR-15, uh, yeah, AR-15s, MRAPs, and head-to-toe black uniforms looking like any bad guy out of a Hollywood movie. The rise of the warrior cop has occurred in direct response to this nonsensical horseshit they con continually spew. In fact, it's getting safer to be a cop in America, as from 2018 to 2019, they had a decrease in fatalities and injuries across the board, yet still advocate for greater armaments, immunities, and access to our everyday lives. Of course, this is pre-COVID because their unwillingness to wear masks, wash their own hands, or get a fucking COVID vac uh, vaccination has led to a steep increase in the fatalities associated with being a police officer. But that one's their own doing. So why is this important? Because if we're ever to fix anything in this country, some public protesting and resistance is going to be necessary. You ever notice who are the first people to respond to an even perfectly uh, peaceful protest are? Yep, police, link included. If the protest is anyway a, th a threat to the status quo, read effective, then they're going to kettle, link included, pepper spray, link included, bing, a uh, beat, link included, shoot, link included, and even drop C4 Tovex TR2 bombs, link included, destroying entire neighborhoods, link included, until the status quo is maintained. To improve anything truly in our society begins with radical police reform. Now, let me restart it. Police officer fatalities or how to control a popular. Cool. All right, cool. Um, hey, Choken, thank you for the sub. Sorry, the alerts aren't on. Um, so, uh, Okay, this motherfucker's got to go. Thank you for capturing that cupcake. Um. Oh, fuck that. Just give me that. I guess I have to save it there. Done. Where's unknown? Oh. 
Um, there we go. Yeah, he had to go. Like, and he had to get it reported. Like, he's making actual death threats and shit. Like, that's TOS. Gotta fucking get him. Um. Joke in. It'll be on the YouTube channel. It'll be on the YouTube channel. It'll be under standalone video playlist. Um. When it goes up, uh, Choke in, it'll, here. Here's, here's the playlist. It'll be on there. Welcome, Shokin. State shouldn't exist, Winston. There. Wow. You asked an anarchist whether the state should be allowed to... Job done. State. The state fails to meet our uh, philosophical justification for its existence or its claim to authority. See, that's, that's the thing. If they use coercive or oppressive uh, um, or a monopolization of force to literally get their way, then they fail to meet the philosophical justifications um, under an anarchist heading. So, um, job done. I'm choking. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. It's it's a thing. Um work I'm currently my current project is my currently my current project, Jesus. Um Um, ah, uh, no, I, I, hmm. I, I know Reno. I like Slurreal. I know, but just no, just no, just no. Like, I would be fine without the linking to it directly. Um, I I'm not comfortable. Twitch isn't going to be comfortable with. It's just it's a thing. Why would you? Why would you need a Kai's Things command, Kavos? It's literally Kai'sThings.com. <laughs> I for I'm just gonna cover my ass on that one right now, like that one. Cash rules everything around me. Cream. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. Wu Tang. It's all I'm hearing. It's all I'm hearing out of random gaming. It's all I'm hearing. I I'm hearing someone who lacks vision and
I don't want a police force. And I do handle my own security. A uh, homie. You're talking to somebody who built his own home automation system from circuitry on up. Programming, circuitry, everything. Really? Because I've been an IT consultant professionally in the Las Vegas Valley since I was 25. Right? I've been doing custom programming since I was 14. This is literally who I am. Homie. You really want to try and dick measure on this thing. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of known for my fucking projects. Like, that's... Yeah. I don't need to key log you. You're fucking... You're typing on Twitch. Your entire chat history is transparent to me. Right? Like... Yeah. Can you show dicks on Twitch? I wish. I got mine pierced like in September. I wish I could have just shown the community like on, on air. Like, I don't want to do it in Discord. I could do it in Discord, but like if I was going to do it, I'd just be like, and here it is, right? Fucking it'd be great. Fucking who cares? Just clinical anyway. It's not like I'm fucking rubbing one out on stream. It's just like, hey, there's fucking, here's the piercing. Like if you, if you want it, like, if you don't want to see it, look away. If you want to see it, well, here you go. Um, but <laughs> whoop, uh, basically dicks out for the chat. Yep. Oh, wait, now it's up. Oh, you just missed it by a second. Oh, um, my sister had a dangerous stalker repeatedly break into her house. Know what the cops did? Arrest a random black guy who's walking past and then leave. The stalker later burned down her house. I figured Kaiser, I was, I was, there's a cool down on the command. So I was safe. No, you wouldn't. Well, you'd pay less tax, but you'd pay more in the commercial side. Um, there's no way you cover your own... Uh, what, was your, what was your fucking examples here? Security, medical, and fire out of, out of pocket and pay, and pay uh, and compensate on the tax side. Mm. Nah. So you want socialist emergency care? No, I want socialized. Do you understand the difference between socialism and socialized? Because I don't think you do. I think you think the government doing things is socialism, which makes the United States military socialist. Is United States military socialism? Corey, I'd be down. Do I have to fucking say it again? I know, right, sweet? Police are then socialists. Yes, police. the police are socialist. Wait, wait, wait. So you want socialism then? So the United States military is socialism because when the government taxes you and pays for something that, that is a communal asset is socialism. That's That's socialism. So the United States military is socialism and you love the United States military. Therefore, by transitive properties, you love socialism. Is that where you're going with this? <laughs> the government does stuff is socialism. And when the government does more st even more stuff, it's communism. Exactly. Richard Wolf. It's not staying in bed good. Dude, I would love to talk to you on air. I'd love to talk to you on there. This would be a shit show. This would be a great way to show, close out Friday. You know what? We're going into bad movie night. I was in a fucking... Um, you want to come on air? 
be a great way to close out uh, Friday. I'll make it happen. We'll get you a fucking link and get you on air. I'd love to have this conversation on air. This would be brilliant. Socialism is when the military does stuff. Yeah, 100%. Oh, now I know you're just a fucking troll, right? Like, you're just a fucking troll. And you're going to hide behind that keyboard. You're not going to come on air. You're a fucking coward. And you will come on air. I know that. Then come on air. Defend your position. Imagine telling an anarchist that militarism equals socialism. Oh. I can fix him. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't fixing him. I just want to talk to him. It's fucking hilarious. I think it's hilarious. People hold these positions. I don't ever try. I Look, I, I, I don't ever. Occasionally, I try and talk them out of it. But, like, there's no... <laughs> Fascism got a, fascism just got a bad name. Homie, I gotta change that mind. But I'd love to fucking pick at the brain. I'd love to fucking pull at some of those threads. Kai right now. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> Fair enough, Sloreal. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you think they know what palingenic nationalism is? No. No, Swede. No, they don't. Um, palingenetic nationalism. Holy shit, man. No. Um, nor does he know who uh, who Griffin is. Right? Well, I mean, if, if he doesn't know who fucking, uh, what palingen palingenetic nationalism is, he definitely doesn't know who Robert Griffin is. So fucking, no. No. He does not know who fucking palingenetic nationalism <laughs> Oh. I got to I got to like manually allow that every fucking time you try and ask that question cupcake. I don't know who you're fucking asking that to, uh, uh, Ruckus. It ain't fucking me. Wait, hold on. Did he really? <laughs> he fucking defended Adolf by throwing Himmler under the bus. Holy shit. That's amazing. I'm not protecting Adolf. I'm just saying Adolf wasn't the original idea. <laughs> You're full of bad takes. I, I kind of, I'm starting to, I'm kind of, yeah, six foot, right? Like, I'm kind of enjoying it, actually. Like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> oh, it's independent thinking, all right. Oh, fascism is good for the economy, usually, Winston. It's just when they get entr entrenched in doing some other shit that they, they fuck it all up. 
But no, regimented authoritarian production? Yeah, it's fucking great for the economy. It's just terrible for everything else. And eventually the end result of it is a fl uh, fleeing of, uh, it's a flight of the demographic base. And so then the economy collapses. So, But for, there's a sweet window there where fascism really fucking produces. Um, and as long as you're milking the system during that window, yeah, you're going to fucking make tons of money. Just make sure that you're like IBM or IG Farben or something like that that can survive that window. Um, but other than that, yeah, eventually what happens is your demographic flees or gets killed off. And, well, then your, your economic base collapses. Um, hey, random, do you understand what an anarchist is? Why am I? That's hilarious. You don't understand what an anarchist is, do you? Fucking, I'm just saying that gulags and socialism, communism isn't as good as you make it out. Uh, GL, what you, what you, um, what you trying to put in? Hold on, GL. Military is social and reminds me of a picture. I was just drinking. Oh, put it in shared content. GL. Put it in shared content. Uh, <laughs> but ECM. Um, look, I will save the, the community from hearing my spiel uh, for the, the 10,000th time. But there is, a, there is in chat, well, a few people broke it up, but... Um, there's a command called anar exclamation anarchism in chat that will get you the channel interpretation definition within the network of ideas that exists. Um, and if you have further questions, and by the way, you don't have to send bits. I thank you for the biddies, by the way. You, in no way, shape, or form do you need to send, send bits, uh, especially to ask a question. But thank you kindly. Um... Goat, an anarchist doesn't want to have people, uh, people have a minimum wage. They want to destroy the concept of wage. Yes, uh, wage labor is seen as an equivalent of slavery under an anarchist uh, anal analysis. Yeah, it's it's wage labor is generally referred to, referred to as wage slavery. And we've gotten up to, like, we've done fucking hours now on the takedown of like so-called like so-called anarcho-capitalists and how support for wage uh wage labor is a fundamental support for slavery and how there is a philosophical ch uh, challenge to be uh that is that has failed to be met there uh what you got oh yes Of course, you're a fucking right wing lib libertarian. Hey, uh, how how you how you uh, how you how you uh, are you a fan of Rothbard? What about my von Mises? What Hayek? What's your fucking deal? You're 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 so called libertarian. What's your fucking deal? Do you know any libertarian philosophy, or you just just you just like I'm a libertarian? You just, you just use words. I'm just for free choice that you're not a libertarian. All right, cool. All right, cool. I, I, I too like to abuse words from time to time. You smack them around, you tell them whatever the fuck, you know, you want them, want them to do. Um, yeah, it's great. Oh, well, yeah, sorry. Winston, I prefer, um, I prefer a more open liberal interpretation of human ideologies. I prefer to care for one another. I prefer to let people be themselves and right-wing interpretations of economics 
of sociology, of psychology, of theology, right-wing interpretations of some of the most critical aspects and axes of human thought lead to a maintain- maintenance of a status quo that is generally oppressive, coercive, and hierarchical. And I oppose that on philosophical, ethical, meta-ethical, and just common sense grounds as an anarchist. So there you go. There's my answer. Oh, Alex is actually a friend of the channel. We Alex did Alex fucking recorded a bit for us. Hmm? Yeah, there's there's an Alex point uh, Alex Jones redemption on this channel. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here for Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Alex Jones, everyone. Um... Boof the system. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Okay, so there's the, the redemption. How does an anarchist work in the framework of a Twitch streaming service using this resource to spread thought? Can you exempt yourself from... Footy, can you exempt yourself from capitalism? Can you exempt yourself from society? Can you create an island in which you are the sole inheritor and progenitor of all thought, operation, and mechanism? No? There you go. There's no way for me to truly escape it. Ultimately, I could probably build a streaming service, but it wouldn't be as effective. It wouldn't have the reach it does. And therefore, what you do is you compromise. You understand that there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. And you understand that one of the most effective means is to meet the people where they are, right? You don't preach in your house, you preach in the commons. So the fact that I am a low ad revenue system the fact that I don't make a whole lot of money for Bezos in the first place, and the fact that in my time here on Twitch, I have seen, well, it's kind of countless at this point, all right? Like, I have engaged with and informed and taught and spread the um, ideologies, philosophies, and ideas that surround anarchistic modalities of operation, I don't know, fairly effectively to those that want to learn them. Um... And so I see it as a subversive act and an act of micro revolution within a macro fascist system. Um, And I'm using specific terminology there that is of uh, of origin with Michel Luc Bellomare. I would not necessarily characterize from that position of a political scientist as the system is being necessarily fascistic. It definitely is oppressive. It definitely is authoritarian. But I'm using specific terminology in that instance that is literally borrowed from a specific author. So I honor his usage of the terminology. But I would consider it a micro-revolution within a macro-fascistic system. As a uh, as um, as uh, as seen within the analysis of Michelle Luc Bellamy, so there you go. Um. Actually, that's the opposite. Goat anarchism. I don't want to clean shit up. No, that's anarchists clean shit up all the time. 
that's I don't like I don't understand how you could even arrive at that conclusion. One of the largest like uh, organizations spanning uh, like over a hundred countries in the world that literally feeds the the destitute, the homeless, and anybody who needs a meal. It doesn't really matter. Starving college student, they'll feed you. Are anarchists. Like they are hierarchically heter organized, distributed network topology anarchists. Like th one of the most purest forms of anarchism, in fact. Anarchists are constantly fixing things in and around their society. It's one of the most notorious things anarchists do is that we're problem solvers. We're community organizers. We're activists. When the um, when the civil rights movement was engaged, anarchists showed up. Right when suffragettes were, uh, were striking for the right to work in the workplace, equal equal treatment in society, anarchists. Right, indigenous protests, anarchists. Right, we're we're the ones who show up when there's problems. Right, like that's you got a problem, the anarchists show up and we help. We try our best to help you fix it. Like that's what we're kind of notorious for at this point within activist circles, at least within the greater greater capitalist milieu and within the hype of like uh, neoliberal capitalism specifically. Definitely, the propaganda machine has given us a bit of a different reputation, most assuredly. Um, Well, I mean, the ANCAPs aren't, an aren't, aren't, uh, aren't anarchists and we're doing an entire, I've got, what are we up to? How many hours now of analyzing um, fucking so-called anarcho-capitalist um, ideology and philosophy and the, the, the rhetoric underpinning it all? They're not anarchists. So as far as the ANCAPs go, they're capitalists. Capitalism and anarchism are and anarchism are not compatible. You cannot be a capitalist and an anarchist as far as ideological concerns go. Now, within the the reality of the the situation, we all must toil under the, the, the boot heel of capitalism. But the fact of the matter is, is that most of us aren't capitalists. You don't own the means of production. You're you're part of the laborers. You're a different class. You're not capitalist. Um, some of you do though. Uh, they hate authority. No, they don't hate authority. They hate the state. They're anti-statist. ANCAPs are just anti-statist. They don't hate authority. Their entire system is a regimented system of authority derived from property rights, as per Rothbard and von Mises, and von Mises, and, uh, von Mises, and and a little bit of Hayek. Um, but they completely ignore all of the core te uh, tenets around it. But no, they have a very strict and rigid hierarchical system of authority that is uh, built around and uh, built on a foundation and a basis of property rights. Um, so it is about the privatization of property and the rights that is then extended to the individuals by ownership of that property. That's, dude, that's the ultimate authority. Yeah, and that's ANCAPs. We've done... We have done hours and hours and hours on debunking ANCAP ideas. <laughs> I love capitalist. Capital letters are my favorite. Josie says, I love capitalist. Capital letters are my favorite. Didn't use a single capital letter. <laughs> I hope that was a conscious, conscious choice, and I fucking love you and respect respect you for it. If it was, um, Chris H. Because property is theft, it's a removal of the items from the commons. And if the rights are derived from the ownership of property and property is transferable through generations, then how on earth? Hey, thank you for the biddies, uh, foot, footy. I'll, I'll, I'll go into that in a second. Um, if property, if property is <laughs> property is theft, it is removal of resources that are necessary for the creation of rights. And if the creation of rights is fundamental to the usage of this property, that is a limited resource. And therefore you are limiting rights. This is this is just basic transference of logic. And yes, property does not equal possession. Usage rights and possession are two different things uh, are, are definitely a different concept. Private property and personal property or usage or possession are definitely different things as far as anarchists and political scientists are concerned. 
You ever just lose a grip of reality while like, yeah, cat. Yeah, when I smoke a fat fucking blunt and then take three shots of whiskey or something like you did. Well, duh, Chris. It's 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 all fucking human construct. It's all human construct. Of course. Of course. Like water's wet, by the way. Anyway, footy. Um, so I've been playing with this idea of anarchists rather than being champions of no rules. Um, rulers. Rulers. Footy. There's your problem right there. Anarchos, derived from the Greek. No rulers. Arcos is ruler, not rule. There's a problem right there in your, your fundamental, there's a fundamental problem in your supposition or your, your initial supposition there, footy. Anarchists aren't against rules. They're against rulers. There's a difference. There's a, there's a chasm of a difference there, but I'll keep working through it. Um, champions of oppressive rules, uh, Another champion, the libertarian ideology gets compared in the scenario being against the big government, but the libertarian ideology is beholden to rules. Uh, oh, but uh, the liberation ideology is beholden to rules. Yeah, again, yeah, all of this collapses because you you founded your idea on the wrong supposition to start with, Footy. Anarchists aren't against rules, they're against rulers. That's the problem with your entire supposition is you've misunderstood the core concept of anarchism. And if you just went back to the original Greek, you would get this right out of the gate. Um, do I have a freedom to build on your property, Random? What makes it your property? Username gets it. Fuck your username gets it. You can have a government, just not a state. Um, yeah. Random gaming. What defines it as your property and can I build on it? Oh, well, then every then you're a communist. Everything is in the commons? Can I own the ocean? Because Nestle would like to own the ocean, too. Um... Narrator, yeah, it's a constant mischaracterization, for sure. Natural rights is a discussion for the uh, for the so-called ANCAPs, not anarchists. Natural rights isn't a distinct, uh, isn't a foundational ideology for anarchists. Um. Oh well, Nestle would like to. Um. No private property based. Yeah. Oh, what did Gemma say? I always like to see what Gemma says. Oh, okay. It's just a back and forth with Night Loader. Okay. <laughs> oh, Kavas. I fucking love you, Kavas. If Nestle takes the ocean, it's war. So what gives them the authority to do that? Random. What gives it what gives a country authority to to arrest somebody? What does that derive from? What is the philosophical underpinnings of that idea? I don't know. I'm not an ANCOM, Chris. I'm an anarchist, plain and simple. I am here to teach you about anarchism. All right? Now Anarchists are big fans of saying there is no project of projects, right? What you do with the anarchistic operation, uh, modalities of operation that I teach you as far as hierarchical organizational modalities, distributed uh, uh, operational modalities, these sorts of things, right? Um, consensus decision-making, these things I cover on a regular basis on my channel. Once you, once, I, once you have these tools in your tool belt, what you do with them is sort of up to you. I, I, anarchism is not a prefigurative system. It's not a pre prefigurative mode of operation. Um, so ascribing ANCOM to me would, is fun, functionally useless. Consider me a professor of anarchism. 
rather than someone who would have either communist, socialist, syndicalist, even the primitivists. I mean, they're valid. They're anarchists. They're just fucking genocidal maniacs, right? Who would have a goal in mind. My goal for you is to understand anarchism as a mode of operation and then use it as that lens of analysis and that tool that it is to help you build a heterarchically organized community around yourself. That's it. That's my goal. I am here. You guys, here you go, guys. I'm a torchbearer for anarchism. Uh, goat, you noticed I already stated that personal property and private property have a political science and an economic distinction. Notice I pointed that out at the fucking top of that. Private property is not the same as personal property. They are, there is a legal distinction, there's an economic distinction, and there is a political scientific uh, political science distinction between personal and private property. It's an important distinction, too. And understanding and contending with that distinction is pretty fundamental. How are primitivists not full-on reactionary? Some of them actually fucking, like, Lenin, some of them really are kind of just fundamentally primitivists, right? Like, not all of them are reactionaries. There are ones that legitimately just believe that, like, unironically returned to monkey is the natural state of human beings. It's fucking wacky as shit, Lenin. Don't get me wrong. I fucking, dude, the fact that I've, these fuckers are weird as shit, man, Lenin. But I've talked to a few of them. They're batshit insane. But they do exist. And you, you've never met one? Lucky. They're, they're wacky as shit, man. They're wacky as shit. And they're genocidal maniacs. Like, even more so than, like, Mao or fucking Stalin. No, they're genocidal maniacs. Like, fuck your diabetes. Fuck your HIV. Fuck your cancer treatment. Fuck all that shit. Fuck modern farming. Fuck life support systems. Fuck all that. You all die. Right? They're batshit insane. They're batshit insane. But there are legitimate anarchists amongst them that organize hierarchically. So I have to, you know, acknowledge them at least. Um, thank you, footy. Um, thank you again for the biddies. I don't need to keep doing it, but I've already told you, you don't need to. Um, it wouldn't be within the, uh, I make fun of primitivists for being online. I know, right? Um, it wouldn't be within the definitional set of, a, like, what you're looking for is what qualifies a ruler, and you're trying to look at it like a, a, a situational set, right? The fact of the matter is, is that there's an ebb and a flow of, an, uh, of um, power dynamic, right? This is where Foucault comes into play. So, um, Michel Foucault. Um, a little post-structuralist in here as well. Um, so what you need is you need to understand the, how a human power dynamic works and it's actually a natural ebb and a flow. So when somebody solidifies or cements their power structure, generally speaking, this is where co uh, coercive and oppressive elements flow out of, right? It's natural to be in charge of conversation for a moment and another person be in charge of conversation for a moment and these sorts of things, right? These, these are natural states of existence for the human social dynamic. But what would probably define a ruler for the definitional set that you're looking for is a cemented, solidified, or calcified set of authority. This then, this then is a point of analysis for anarchists where we would say, is there authority there? Yes. Okay. Can you justify that authority? Classic example. A uh, child walking down the street walks into the street. The parent grabs the arm and yanks the child back just before a truck hits them, right? Totally justified authority, right? There's a power dynamic that is 100% authoritarian. It is uh, remove the bodily autonomy of that individual, despite them being a child, right? Like, you know, especially them being a child. But it has removed their bodily autonomy and forced them back uh, by the vo volition, uh, through the volition and will of somebody else, right? But it's a justified use of, use of authority. Right. So this is the sort of thing to anarchists. Remember, I said it's a tool. It's a lens of analysis. It's a modality of operation. Right. Anarchism is about that lens of analysis. It is very much sitting back and looking at something and going, OK, can these things clear these hurdles? Right. Can they meet a meta ethical analysis? Uh, what did a resolution say or do? That's why he's an ex. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, 
I think of it a follow footing. Could you imagine where we'd be with COVID if Amprims were in charge? Yeah, we'd all be dead of COVID. <laughs> Fucking Amprims are bad. Dude, the Prims are shit. They're batshit insane. They're batshit insane. They're genocidal maniacs. They're genocidal maniacs. Fucking wacky as shit. Primitivists, footy. Primitivists. Um, she predicted 80% dead, yeah. Yeah. I, I... And Prims and Neolibs have a lot in common. You know what? I'll take it. Slavic. I'll take it. Yeah. I, I You know, I'm not going to die on that hill, but you know what? Why not? Why not? If we're fucking... If we're just poking holes... Oh, fucking hey, Give me a sec, cat. Let me just refresh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't care about Pierre. Okay. So, I just wanted to check on the, the Rousseauian definition of natural rights because I know na uh, Rousseau cat uses natural rights, but Rousseau used it as a synonym for uh, 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 like a conceptually equivalent precursor of liberty, right? So I wanted to, I just want to make sure that I was fucking processing that correctly. Um, thoughts on like pre-social contract Rousseau? Um I don't necessarily understand what you mean by pre-social contract Rousseau, but he, um, like, as far as the social compact goes with Rousseau, I... Yeah. Mm. Rousseauian belief is fundamental from what I un or I remember of Rousseau's readings, Cat, Rousseau believed that fundamentally, it was almost sternerist in his readings, right? He believed that human beings had a fundamental right to do as they they saw fit to pursue self-preservation, but um, any overstepping, like any overstepping of the bounds or harm that is brought to another or, uh, or subordinating another to their will, I believe is the turn of phrase, um, was a, uh, a violation of this, this social contract, right? The social compact. And thus all of it built out of that. So like pre-social compact Rousseau is essentially like unrestricted sternerist freedom. So I would say, like, if you read Rousseau and you stop before, like, an, a, a dive into social uh, social compact, it reads very much like Sterner. Um, just that Rousseau keeps going and then does the, like, union of egoists, basically. It is very similar now that you bring it up. That's interesting. I never really thought about that that way. But yeah, Rousseau does read very similarly to Sterner in that regard from like a, a macro analytic point of view. Um, Footy, there is a reading list, um, but it is surrounded. It is about anarchism. I don't really give a shit about the, the other stuff. Um, yeah, skeptic like Rousseau. <laughs> like like Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Yeah. Um, uh, but Footy... Um, Start here. Government to no one. Theory and practice of anarchism by Ruth Kinna. Um, that's your starting point. It's a good starting point. If you want to know more about anarchism, though, you're going to go to here. Demanding the Impossible a History of Anarchism by, P by Peter Marshall. It's on the reading list. Um, but start with Ruth Kinna. Yeah, I know Skeptic. But it reads very similarly to, to, um, to Sterner in that regard. That it that was fundamental to uh, the precursor for um, his his the reading of Rousseau for natural rights is very much like a precursor to just liberty. Um, he's not using it in the religiosity fashion that most people use natural rights for when when Rousseau used the terminology, and so yeah, like it, there is a way to read Rousseau is almost sterner. It's weird, but yeah, I've never just quite analyzed it that way. The way cat was kind of but you know yeah uh demanding the impossible a history of anarchism it's 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 not a small book 
Um, but like, start here. Start here. If you're if you've got questions about anarchism, start here. Ruth Kinna, government to no one. Um, but if you've got any 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 questions, um, thank you, Footy. If you've got questions beyond that, feel free to come back. I'll answer them. Um, oh, see, S Slavic, the hilarity of it, <laughs> demanding the impossible. It's like 880 pages long, right? Like this is, it's an ironic title. That's the hilarity of it is, oh, that's impossible. It, it, not that impossible. Um, well, yeah, f fuck your username. That's highly Eurocentric. If I were going to do a, um, uh, uh, fuck it. If I were going to do a full anarchist, like, breakdown i've got a uh, i've got a few books that like cover like korea and japan and south america and like right like when you start stacking it it gets about yay wide with this sort of like history of anarchism sort of anthology on a global scale condensed down it's about that big uh what link in the bio footy um i don't i'm not entirely sure what you're asking quite frankly I mean, you can read it differently, but Rousseau's law of nature literally states that human uh, human beings have the right to do literally whatever they want in the pursuit of their own um, preservation, and that the only explicit forbidden action is the subordination of another's will. Um, oh, for the reading list? I just prefer to leave it as a chat command. If somebody wants a reading list, they can fucking have the reading list. But I don't need to put it in the, like, about and bio and shit like that. There's no need for that. So Rousseau was an ANCAP. Good to know. I mean, that's the tolerance paradox, right, Slavic? That's the to that's the crux of the tolerance paradox. If you tolerate intolerance for too long, intolerance becomes the norm, and therefore your liberties are uh, subordinated to something else. All right? You can you can't you can only tolerate so much intolerance. There's there's a limited um, there's a limited capacity within the society to tolerate intolerance. Otherwise, it subord uh, it subverts the societal uh, fabric or structure. Yeah, good old tolerance paradox. a good time uh rousseau was an idealist then yeah he was a german idealist <laughs> literally classified as an idealist rousseau was rousseau was the definition of a german idealist uh, uh, of a uh, like german uh, you know like uh, yeah german idealism yeah not rousseau uh, himself but he, like literally like his his german idealism is an outflowing of rousseau's writing yeah like he he would be seen as a precursor. He would be prefigurative to ger the German idealism movement. Yeah, he, Rousseau definitely had um, idealistic roots as far as far as that goes. Um, oh. wait, 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 hold on. I I, I missed something. It was the cat fucking replying to something. I mean, you can say that, but I'm betting if I search Rousseau and idealism, the first thing that comes up is going to be something about German idealism. So let's do it. Um, 
R O U S S E A U. Yep. Idealism. There we go. So, I mean, Uh, with limited knowledge, pending some in-depth reading on my own. I love that. I love that proviso, Footy. I love that proviso. What's the stance on firearms? The stance on firearms on this channel is firearms for everybody but cops. Yeah. Firearms for everybody but cops. Doesn't matter. If you go far enough left, you get your guns back. Anarchists are pro-firearms ownership. Fucking even Karl Marx. For firearms and ammunition should never uh, must not be surrendered, and any attempt to do so should be frustrated by force if necessary. Yep, go far enough left to get your guns back. Thank you for the biddies again, buddy. I just consider military cops. They're just cops on a bigger scale. It's all cops. But it's all the same thing, right? You could probably vice versa that too. The cops are the military. The cops are the army on the streets. And then, you know, the bigger army goes abroad, right? Um, you, can, you could vice versa this either direction. I just, you know, they're all fucking cops. America! Fuck yeah. Yeah, they're defined as paramilitary. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, they're, they're just all cops. They're just all cops. Some of them are like, you know, cops elsewhere. Some of them are cops here. Some of them are military elsewhere. Some of them are military here. Just use your, your own verbiage. Fucking, you're, 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 you're big boys, girls, and NB pals, right? Like, you can all figure it out for yourselves, but they're all just fucking cops. Um, yeah, yeah, the soldiers do have, like, stricter rules of engagement and better training. I would, here's the thing. I trust, I trust soldiers with firearms near explicitly. Cops I don't trust with firearms at all. And I, I literally, my family ran firearms training facilities, right? My mother was, was, uh, in, tapped for like, uh, Olympic shooting team. Um, my, my family, like multiple States, right? Okay. So just, I grew up with guns to a certain extent. Stepfather has uh, had, has had and has an FFL, right? Like this is just part of my familial history. I've trained with and experienced some very interesting things in my day. I trust the military guys with their, with their guns. The cops, I do not trust any of them with guns. They're terrible. So, you know, Gemma, interestingly enough, it's not that huge of a phenomenon here in the U.S. Most of the soldier, most of the, uh, the the soldiers and cops don't actually get along. There's not a huge influx of soldiers into the policing in America. It's it's actually a minority percentage. Um, which is about the, the ones that do become cops. Well, fuck them, fuck them, t fuck them twice, Gemma. But actually, yeah, it is a minority percentage in this country. Um, they the majority of the 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 cops are not ex-military. So my family split between cops and criminals. Isn't that always kind of the way though, Slavic? There's a certain tradition to that, right? Soldiers laugh at cops' firearms handling. It, they, did, they, they, they laugh and cry because, quite frankly, they killed a whole bunch of them, too. <sighs> um, we wouldn't, we, I, I, footy, like, I have to, like, I have to do this just because I have to do this, right? We wouldn't have police, but we do have uh, community protection methodologies, yes. Um, but we wouldn't, like, did, did we would. We're really, we're really twitchy about that fucking word, right? You gotta understand. Like, you have to understand. Like, right? You get it. Fucking cops, man. <laughs> fucking, that word alone fucking sends people into like, 
uh, no, we don't have we don't have police that sort of things, but we do have methodologies for ma- ensuring that the community has safety mechanisms. But rounding people up and putting putting them in chains and throwing them like in kidnapping them and shit, no, anarchists don't have a methodology for that. Hey, car. Goat cars kill a lot of people too. <laughs> Medications kill people. Life is full of risk. He who trades liberty for safety deserves neither. It's just the way of things. You when you're born onto this planet, no one there's no guarantee of safety. Ever. At any point. It isn't a thing that exists. And anybody who attempts to sell you that ticket to safety is a con artist. So. Slavic is, that's the correct position. Slavic. Yeah. I, I've i told Europeans and people who don't come from a gun culture this all the time. Look, if you have a magic wand and you can get rid of guns tomorrow, like just erase guns permanently from like our, ment- our, 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 our knowledge set and our history and our future, if you've got a magic wand, wave that motherfucker. What you waiting for? But if you don't, then disarming the responsible law-abiding people like seems like the dumb idea in this situation. Right? Like that's... Until then, like... That's a dumb fucking idea. Blunt weapons would still exist and thus we'd need the guns again. Um, I, I'd, I'd start firearms training at age eight. I'd introduce you to the concept and idea much younger than that, but I'd start basic firearms training at age eight. <clears throat> yeah. That, that's where I'd start the, start the topic. All right, we need to fucking, we got other shit to do. I'm um, sorry for the, all of those who are waiting for bad movie night. It's been a fucking stream. <clears throat> um, I mean, footy, I just, like I said, I just start fucking training at age eight. Um, for those of you who don't know, we do bad movie night on the discord server Friday nights. Um, and we, we're, we're running light. So, um, yeah, that ban on guns in Australia, you need to look more into that. If you think that's the argument that you think it is, um, because Australia still has plenty of firearms. (laughs) Um, it's not, it's not. Yeah. Like you need to look further into the statistics and numbers involved in that incident. If you think that is somehow a solid argument to even fucking put and gun buybacks don't work in America. Uh, Now they have more guns than they did in 1990. Um, And uh, gun buybacks don't work in America. We've shown that time and again. So, like, it's just a non-argument. So that's, it's adorable that you tried, but it's not a thing. So, those of you who aren't members of the Discord community and you want to actually participate in Bad Movie Night, by all means, you're welcome, you're invited. We hold it on the voice chat. Um, but we like to just get loose and fucking get fucked up and watch bad movies after a week a week of just horror and doom, right? So, um, I'm going to probably, let's see, let's figure some shit out here. Um, where's my, there's my fucking manager and shit like that. F- 
it, and somebody is already in voice chat. Yep. Um. Uh, footy, footy exclamation discord. Somebody already put the link in chat, but here I'll, I'll, I'll handle, I'll handle. <clears throat> yeah. Gun buy, gun buybacks don't work in America. We've shown that time and again, they don't work here. Um, so footy link in chat, join the discord community. You're going to get a guy rules and guidelines page. Click the, um, X, uh, click the checkbox at the end of it. Um, that'll get you the welcome roll and then you can partake. Um, also do it, do us a solid and change your nickname to whatever your fucking Twitch username is. If it is different or put it in parentheses after it or something, let us know who the fuck you are on Twitch. It helps. So we all know who we're dealing with. Um, Good. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, and Cerise Vader de Raj. Um, fucking. I need to re enable all these alerts. Don't let me forget that. Um, hot take breakfast is reactionary. <laughs> um, Mitre is a longtime friend, community member, OG that predates Twitch. Um, and he makes music. He's, he's, I've described his stream as the embodiment of ADHD. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to raid over to Mitre. I won't be hanging out, but I'm going to raid over to Mitre. Um, he's good people. I love Mitre. I love him to death. Um, so if you want to join us for bad movie night, we'll be on the discord server. Um, and yeah, for a whole bunch of new people, welcome. Um, Yeah. This is sort of, it's one aspect of what I do. Um, there's other aspects of what this channel does and what this, what this stream is. Um, not all of them were <clears throat> talked about or done tonight, but yeah, this is definitely indicative of some of the levels and uh, levels of conversation and topical stuff we cover. So hope y'all enjoyed it. Much love. I'm on five days a week, not the weekend. Catch y'all later.